Hello and welcome to the second semi-finals match of ASL Season 17, brought to you by Well New Life Ultimate Custom Prestige Gaming Chairs. With a clean 4-1 victory in the first semi-final match yesterday, Hero succeeded in advancing to the grand final once again after a long 13 seasons. His opponent for the finals will be decided through today's match between Solki and Snow. Let us take a look at the parts that brought our two players here this season. We'll first have a look at this season's bracket. Snow advanced to the semi-finals having defeated Bisu in the round of 8, while Solki took down Mini in the quarter-finals to make the round of 4. Let's now take a look at the focal points for both players. First up Snow, who despite dropping a single map in the winner's match in the round of 16, managed to advance to the round of 8 nonetheless, where he took down Bisu with a 3-0, advancing to the round of 4 for the first time in 9 seasons. And now for Solki, his opponent in the quarterfinals was Mini, whom he had also met in the grand final of last season. The match ended with a 3-2 reverse sweep for Solki in similar fashion to his round of 8 match last season, as he made the semi-finals once again. Up next are the detailed matchups for Snow this season. Snow got through the round of 24 and the round of 16 having faced off against Terran and Zerg opponents only, and ended up playing against the Protoss and Bisu in the round of 8. Snow carried on the momentum and advanced on to the round of 4, where he's going to face off against defending champion Solki. Let's take a look at his matchups now. Save for the opening match against Mong in the round of 16, Solki advances to the semi-finals having faced off against powerful Protoss players in Bisu and Mini, and will once again play against a powerful Protoss in Snow this time. Both players are now vying for a spot in the finals, having gone through very tough opponents indeed. Here are the potential scenarios sh uh, shaping up with either player advancing to the finals. For Snow, this will be his third finals appearance after the last one being nine seasons ago in Season 8. Both in Seasons 5 and 8, Snow managed to advance to the Round of 4 and then the Grand Final, which means his win rate in the Round of 4 stands at 100% so far. With three finals appearances, Snow would be the second pro us play with the most grand finals right behind Mini and with last season's finals having featured Solki and Mini this would give us two ZVP finals in a row. For Solki this would be a back-to-back -back finals run becoming the second Zerg player alongside Zero to achieve consecutive finals and Solki would be tied with Effort, Zero and Hero in first place for the most finals appearances as a Zerg player. Lastly this would give us a ZVZ finals for the first time in seven seasons with the last one being Zero versus Soma in season 10. And now it's time for predictions, courtesy of the remaining round of 16 players. Surprisingly enough, we have an even 6-2-6 split of the 12 players for the predictions, and save for Barracks and Rush, who opted for Solki, all the other players expect this series to go to the rubber match. What about the viewers then? Let's take a look at the poll results. 56% of the fans expect Solki to advance to the finals. With how close the predictions are, you do not want to miss this match. You're waiting for the second semi-finals match of ASL Season 17, done in partnership with Well New Life Ultimate Custom Prestige Gaming Chairs. As we wonder which one of our players will snatch that last ticket to the Grand Final, let's get things going here for the Snow vs Solki match.
we are moments away from the last round of four bouts of ASL Season 17. A finalist will be decided today up on this stage. Hero was the first to advance to the grand final, with his ultimate opponent being determined through today's match. Waiting for this are Snow and last season's champion Solki. Let's talk to our players. Solki. Yes? Right now, Hero is awaiting in the grand final. You reverse swept the demanding opponent that was Mini. A reverse sweep just like last season. And as you made it into the round of four, Snow was there, waiting. Snow, whose PVZ is the lowest among the Protoss ring leaders in ASL, waiting. Are you in the finals? Yeah, I'm already in the finals. In any case, Snow is considered to have a very weak versus Zerg in offline matches. I don't know if that's the reason, but I feel confident. What about when you faced Mini? Did you not feel the same way? I had no confidence there. You had no confidence then, but now you're overflowing with it? That's right. But he's like a wall. You're, you're a wall yourself. It's a reference to Sulky's nickname, Tolbyog in Korean. He does well online. Snow, was, Snow does well online, but offline, he's lost to a lot of other Zergs. How could he do well against me? An online one-hit wonder. A Protoss one-trick pony. Now hang on, playing offline when you made it to the finals. Your win rate in the round of four is 100%. But today, you're meeting Sulky. Are you an online specialist? No. This time I too prepared diligently. Every day people kept saying I only play well online, so I just gripped my teeth and prepared. Not only is Sulky the champion of last season, this time around he also managed to reverse sweep a PVZ expert mini. He beat Rain last season. He's a great player, a scary player, a champion. Are you not afraid? No fear whatsoever, you know? I also consider myself as having advanced already. Advanced? Where? The finals! I have confidence! Oh, the finals! Yes, so if I don't let my guard down, I am sufficiently capable of winning today. So with all that in mind, I bet you have some aces up your sleeve to help you get over this wall that is Sulky. But analyzing Sulky's play, he's not just a macro, a defensive player, he now attacks with his shield. Honestly? He's become very relaxed in his in the way he plays recently. It's not like there aren't things about him that are demanding. Of, of course there are. But I've done a bunch of thinking. And what did you think about? I thought about how to respond, how to deal with all the various plays. And so in this prepared scenario, when the simulation went perfectly, do you have the confidence to deliver a sweeping victory today? Honestly, maybe not a sweeping victory, but a 4-2, a 4-2, yeah, a around a 4-3, just narrowly, yeah, I've come prepared to win just narrowly. So Solki, if you win, if you win game one, what score will it be? Every single time, it's been all seven games, regardless of how well I play. Perhaps today might be so difficult we go to game seven as well, is what I'm thinking. With that in mind, Snow has also come prepared skill-wise. So Solki, with what mindset are you looking to engage in today's match? I reckon a lot of people are rooting for Snow because they would rather see a ZVP than a ZVZ in the finals. But I'm not thinking about that too much. So I'll do my best. The burden is on your shoulders now, Snow. How are you looking to engage today? What are you looking to show? naturally for myself, but also for the fans, and for the sake of Afrika TV, I shall prevent a mirror matchup. I see, there is a lot on the line today, and so through today's match, is Snow going to maintain his 100% win rate in the round of four and make the finals, or is it going to be reigning champion Solki moving on to the grand final stage again? Please put your hands together as we start this second semi-finals match.
메시즌 우승 후보 여러 가지 찬사들이 이어졌는데 오랜만에 한 아홉 시즌 만에 4강에 올라갈 가능성 그 네. 하나 왔어요. 스톤이 자, 있어요. 와, 뭉쳐 있는 쪽으로. 하나씩 때려봤자 쓰러질 장윤철이 아니었습니다. 아, 아, 이거 셔틀 하나로 리버 셋을 와. 지금은 아케이드를 와. 하고 있어요. 야, 이거 세 개를 컨트롤해요. 실제 이 완전 체화되어 돌아왔습니다. 4강에 올라가는 장윤철. 풀세트에서 항상 무릎을 꿇었었던 김민철 선수 대역전극이 나왔습니다 다시 한번 만들어진 4강 풀세트 접전 14번 시즌 도전 만에 드디어 체명을 올려서 완벽으로 우승자가 됩니다 결승전 리매치 위기가 찾아온 김민철 이 6할 찍혔습니다 아, What's up, everybody? Welcome to the final day here of the round of four of the ASL. We've got heroes in the finals already. Now it's going to be between uh, Snow and Sulky. Yeah, this is going to be an amazing match, no doubt. Can I give you my vision here for a moment, Tasteless, about this? Yes, yes, you can, Artosis. Okay, so imagine this, if you would. We have the best Protoss vs. Terran player of all time. Like, if you guys don't watch a ton of StarCraft online, Snow has demolished all of the world's best Terrans with, like, an 80-plus percent win rate for the last year. Okay, so unbelievably good in that matchup. He's already beaten Bisu in this tournament. If he were to win, going through literally the best two macro zergs in the world in Sulky and Hero, that might be the most dominant we've had a Protoss player in the modern era. Yeah, you know, you make a very good point, Artosis. Although Snow is untouchable in the matchup PVT, there's no more Terrans left. Historically, he has struggled the most versus Zergs. Mm -hmm. His PVP has always been pretty good. It's been fine. Uh, it's certainly in great shape now. But he has to go up and take on, you're right, two of the strongest and most dynamic Zergs we have here. Uh, in StarCraft 1. So I think in some ways this is still maybe the hardest path mm -hmm. that Snow can possibly yeah. take. Sulky is the previous winner of the last season of the ASL. This is a guy we were saying for a long time was going to win an ASL. He finally did. He could win another, which would be huge. And, of course, you've got Hero waiting in the finals. Hero know, at yeah. times looks like he's the best play He's most consistent. He's almost always in the round of four, at least the round of eight. Uh, and he's looking untouchable this season. So it's exciting no matter who comes out on top. But talk about three very, very scary players left uh, out of the top four. Absolutely. Absolutely. Taking a look at today's maps. Dark Origin, Retro, Blitz, Y, Citadel, Troy, Radeon, Apocalypse. Dude, I look at that. I actually think this is pretty reasonable for Snow. Right? Like, I like... I think Dark Origin is a very good map for PvZ overall. Like, it's just... A very kind of dynamic map, and I've seen a lot of good PVZs there. Blitz, why I think is a very good map for Protoss. And, of course, Troy. We all know that all you have to do on Troy is make Zealots. So, like, this is... <laughs> I can see Snow doing really well here against Sulky, man. I'm believing. Like, I've already sold it to myself that he's going to win this ASL. It's just too good a path. Well, we're either going to have a PVZ finals, which would be amazing. Hero versus Snow. What a crazy match that would be. Or it would be the craziest ZVZ ever. Yeah. Last time we had a ZVZ finals in an ASL. Who was that? Queen versus... Soma. Uh, was it Hero? No, or was it, it was Queen Larva. versus Soma, I believe. Queen right? versus Soma. No, you're right. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. It was so long ago. That, in fact, that, that was, was back the... when we did that finals in Dongdae Moon in this weird yeah. part of Seoul we never did finals in. And, you know, that, um, was a, that was a backwards world day. I actually came to the finals with a mustache. Remember that? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, <laughs> we were in a we were in a different timeline. Yeah, we were. That was the Artosis mustache <laughs> timeline. So the matchup history is one to five, but I don't know if this is a fair reflection of what it should look like today. Yeah, we were just saying Snow. 
it did seem like his weak spot was PVZ. He has really built out a very robust and solid PVZ. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's as scary as Minis. Mini seems to be able to bend the rules a little bit. Yeah. Even doing weird stuff like taking a third base really fast, which is fairly uncommon in the matchup. Um, but for Snow, it's going to come down to whether or not he can just rely on that kind of standard, whether it's a gate expand uh, or a forge expand style, or if he's going to also incorporate a bunch of weird uh, stuff, some one base play, maybe proxy gates. You know, there's a lot of cheesy, crazy stuff that Protoss can do, although they don't have to win with that. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, it, it, like, uh, maybe Snow is almost more predictable in a way, kind of, but I think he actually plays, like, kind of a, because he's safer, that might be difficult as well. Like, it, if you remember that, that series that we just saw with Sulky against Mini, uh, right, like, some of Sulky's victories were him kind of being like, okay, now we're gonna trick Mini in this way because Mini gets greedy in this way, right? Like, that mass ling where he just held back the lings for so long for the right moment to pounce, right? Things like that. I don't think you're gonna get wins that look like that against Snow, you know what I mean? Yeah, I see what you're saying. I, I think that Snow is, is very well-rounded in his PVZ. Mm -hmm. It does seem like Protoss can always stop the Zerg if they do play that perfect game, if they know when they need to make cannons, when they need to disengage from that, uh, how to scout, what to look for. And Snow's become extremely strong at that. Now, one thing about players like that is they do seem to be the most susceptible to three hatch Hydra. Mm -hmm. There are still three hatch Hydra builds that can kill them. Um, we're going to go into a lot more of the nuance of early game PVZ as we get into the games. But uh, keep in mind, Sulky, he's got a lot of dirty tricks in the early game, too. Yeah. Like you were saying, Artosis, he knows when to hide lings, when to accumulate them. There are specific moments in the game, if things develop pretty normally, that Protoss has to push out or they're playing blind. And there are a lot of great tactics at the highest level with ling run-ins uh, or, or faking out how many Zerglings are there to try to punish them. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a great match. It is. It is. I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to this one. Uh, Snow, you know, this is this is really his moment. He did make a finals like a long time ago against Rain, if you recall. And Rain kind of bashed him. Rain's PvP just out of control. But like the amount that Snow is better now than he was back then is astronomical. Like the amount that he has improved, he's really the most improved player in the world this year. This year is I like agree. for the last year or so, guys, he has really all the all the smaller stuff that's online that's not ASL, Snow has absolutely crushed just crushed yeah it's a good point snow seemed to have this really special way that he understood pvt and let's face it pvt is such a different matchup than pvz it's crazy how much one matchup can change from the other mm -hmm. where like all the skills that you have in pvt they don't really apply in pvz protoss is a funny race obviously it has the mirror matchup which always has its own parameters which how it operates in uh, a fairly tight matchup at that. PVT, you really are almost like a Zerg player. You're macroing, you're taking the map, you're trying to get ready for a push. You're going to be like the player that's going to counterattack in uh, or flank or, or, or try to drop and punish them as they're leaving their base. PVZ, you really play more like a, a Terran in the classical sense, mm -hmm. the way that Terran plays TVP uh, or TVZ, where they're pushing, they're controlling, they're trying to shut things down before uh, the other player can really get them started. And it just seems like, although Snow is obviously always pretty good at it, he wasn't able to hang with the best. Yeah. And now he is facing the best of the best. <laughs> is that us? <laughs> yeah, 100% that that's us, man. There's my big head. I know, it's huge. Yes, and I look so uncanny. grumpy there. That was uh, like that was almost photo perfect. <laughs> that's yeah, exactly yeah. what we look I like. I said, Artosis, take us, take us off camera and put the audience <laughs> back on. I love it. I love it. Well, I think we're getting ready here for our first map. It's going to be Dark Origin. Really important first map to set the tone for this best of seven. Yeah, this is Oh, We're already going to go into it, guys. Let's get ready. Again, the winner of this best of seven is going off against Hero here in the finals of season 17 of the ASL. All right, up in the top left is Snow, and the bottom right is Sulky. Our map is Dark Origin. So there's um, 
several ways that this map can be played early game. I would be surprised if we have any proxy gates in the middle of the map. That seems to really be out of style. Mm -hmm. um, I know that back in the days of like KSL, when Rain was really the dominant Protoss, not just, I guess, for the race, the dominant player in the world, um, he did a lot of proxy gates and seemed to make it work quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And Mini would do um, them from time to time as well. But I'm pretty much predicting that Snow is going to be fast expanding in all these games. Now, it could be a Nexus first fast expand, which is a little bit riskier. That's a little bit more out of the mini playbook. Mm -hmm. uh, or it could be one of the two mainline plays, which is either a Forge expand with the option to Cannon Rush if you want to punish a Zerg if they do a bad build versus that. Or the Gateway expand, which is a little bit... I think it was more trendy a few years ago. It seems mm -hmm. like Forge expand is back in style with the new maps that we have. How much do you think that's just a meta shift versus maybe like the rush distance is a bit longer? I know that can sometimes, uh, you know, account in for it where it's like, oh, this this particular map has like longer rush distances, like a Radeon or something, right? So maybe the, the Zealots aren't going to be able to do quite as much and then you want to go forge something like that. Uh, I mean, that could be it for sure. I think that anything that allows you to make a cannon rush behind geysers, especially, mm. but also behind minerals, is going to be pretty tempting. This is a forge expand. We knew that once the probe left uh, with the pylon. Uh, if you see them hatch expand, you could make a pylon and cannons of where the, uh, the geyser is. This basically means that zergs don't um, open up with a hatch first because they can be punished, although every once in a while we'll have that anyways, which mm -hmm. is kind of wild. And zergs will try to win mechanically. Uh, now, in this map, look, this probe's going to be killed off, but what's more important is that this probe that made the forge actually mm -hmm. went all the way around, and he can hide this. He doesn't have to show this. It looks like he might actually show it, but... Um, well, what is that all about? Is he going to hide, like, a cannon rush or something? Like, what is this? Well, yeah, okay, so I think he could. So here's the thing. You don't. You see this one probe, right? Yeah. Lings don't have good vision, by the way. Yeah. So he is literally doing like a cannon rush. This feels like it's 1998. Yeah. Um, so you when you see the probe there, you just <laughs> assume that there's not anything being made. Mm -hmm. And because this probe is still alive, the lings are just going to keep chasing it. Dude, so he, this is like... This is wild. He actually brought a secondary yeah. probe down to his natural as well as the Overlord was coming. So, like, he is, like, really trying to hide what's going on here. Now he loses the probe in the main. If Solky checks but, this, the, the gig is up. Yeah, but if he checks it, I don't think he's going to check it. You don't even look back there. In fact, he's looking other spots. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my Tasteless. God, Artosis. I think that he can't let this. This is not going to work. And this is already really bad for, for Snow. You know, I was talking about how I thought he was going to do mainline plays, and this mm -hmm. really looks like something Mini would try. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's not, not that Snow shouldn't try to take, you know, pages from Mini's playbook, but it's not a very Snow-esque move. That's a real tournament build, um, and it didn't quite pan out. No. It, you know, Solky is, I guess, smart enough to know that if he's going to have those extra links, he might as well poke into all these other spots. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Look, at the highest level, this is really tough to recover from because your Nexus is so late. It, that looks that looks terrible for him. But I, I do have to throw out there, like, if he had kept the probe alive in the main for, like, 10 more seconds, I think that would have worked, right? And he might pick up, like, the easiest yeah. victory of this of this round, right? Like, that's that would be, oh, like, yeah. such a quick, uh, easy win. So it doesn't work out for Snow, but just the fact that he did that even though he's like very likely going to lose this game because everything is set back so much, I almost feel like that is going to make Solky really reconsider how this series is going to play out. Yeah, you make a good point, Artosis. Like, just seeing that Snow is capable of doing that and doing it on this map to start things off is a sign that he really put a lot of homework into this. Mm -hmm. Um. And, you know, that's a strategy you can only do on a map where there's two spawns. We didn't really see this much uh, type of play. By the way, he's doing a Ling on. <laughs> um, so this could also backfire. It's all going to come down to whether or not the Lings can get in or not. But uh it, if the Lings actually get in, um, this game's going to end. If he can, like, try to sandbag it with his own probes, he'll be fine. Mm-hmm. 
Well, uh... I mean, he doesn't really have a way he's, to, like, drill probes out or anything. Is, is Solky going to actually do this attack? Because he's just kind of chilling right now. Is he waiting for the Zolts to move out well, or something? Th this is an odd one. So he, so Solky's going for two hatch layer. Mm -hmm. And I think he's actually also getting drop. Oh, my so God. This is really? Like a really advanced response. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because he has a spire on the way. So I was like, oh, okay, I've seen, you know, I've seen builds like this where you go, like, well, speed lane into Muta real quick. But this is wild. So this is, you know, he's going to have less Mutas. But if, if a probe were to run inside the base and check, you would be thinking, oh, my God, it's a, a, mm -hmm. a, a spire, and I need to be ready. And instead, this is going to load up with Lings. He's going to dump them right out. Um, and, I mean, we'll see if Snow survives. Now... Soki doesn't have to play like this, but this is an interesting way he's approaching this. Dude, if he oh checks that... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. If he had checked that, it's just like, are you two only going to try to trick each other today and get three wins? Uh, those those drops coming up, there's only one cannon in the main base. And now he's going to have Mutas so on the way? Be... I think this is just a Soki win, isn't it? Well, it depends on the probes and if they're controlled right in the main. You know, if the cannon, the second one in the middle, finishes, you can actually hold this sometimes. Okay. Well, here so come he's those got Zerglings. Two groups out now. Dude, okay, the first cannon going to go down really quickly, but he does have good pro blocking going on here. Builds a secondary building next to that cannon, so I'm going to block that a little bit. Coming in with the Zealots and the Dragoon. Man, like, you know, huh. I this is one of the, the things I was trying to get at earlier is like, you don't have to do this as Soul Key. You could have just tried to get further and further ahead. Mm -hmm. Instead, he almost tried to judo flip this position. Now, he's going to fly in here. He's hitting these Corsairs. The Scourge are going to come in. The cannon's almost out. The cannon goes down. I think the second cannon's going to be picked off here. Um, there are, what, five Mutalisks total. Another set of Scourge come in. Now, he needs to kill the next two Corsairs. Dude, this is that, not he's going doing a great well. Job. He's using the cannon to target this. He's using the cannon to target this, which is really impressive. Uh, Snow keeps the Scourge. Uh, sorry, Snow keeps the Corsairs alive. The Scourge is still alive. He's going to try to do kind of like a, a mini Ogre Zerg gamer here, <laughs> which is like just. That's a Troll take Zerg him out gamer right real there. Quick. It's a it's smaller a form of yet. Ogre. <laughs> it's a, Yeah, it lives under a bridge. And <laughs> It basically, it's supposed to hit really fast, but I think actually Snow stabilizes. This is one of the wildest early game PVZs I have ever seen. Yeah. I find it really surprising that Sulky went for, like, Zergling Drop Muta after finding a failed cannon rush. And then, like, I'm, I'm looking at this. I, maybe I'm wrong, but I think Snow is well ahead now, right? Oh. <laughs> You're 100% right. Well, look at how many probes are mining. Yeah. I mean, we just saw the Zerg's natural. There was, like, I think one drone on minerals and everything else is on gas. Now, this, the Protoss is not out of the woods yet. Mm -hmm. It's all going to be about surviving the next big incoming attack. And, and I could tell you right now, I think he has four cannons in his main. I wouldn't blame him if he made five, okay? Because the yeah. Zerg is all in from here. <laughs> The Protoss is, is is basically starting to glide into a very healthy spot in the game. There's also two Stargates out here. That's a smart move as well. But when you get this many Mutalisks, if, this, if the Corsairs are killed off in one big hit, mm -hmm. the Mutas will wipe you out. So Sulky still has one more opportunity, I think, mm -hmm. depending on how this interaction goes. Maybe another one after this if, if they trade out. But he's basically going to make the Corsairs keep running. Oh, no. They're just in the middle of the map. Ooh. Well, now he sees what's going on. Double Corsair production. He has like six or seven right now, plus those cannons. And look at that. The Scourge coming up. Let's see if the Scourge actually end up hitting. He's trying to dodge them. A bunch of the Scourge actually do end up hitting here, but the Mutalists are being taken out. Oh, my God. Really nicely done. Now, he got a lot of the Corsairs. There's two Corsairs. Or sorry, three, I think, actually. And then there's two more that are being made in the Stargates. Look at this one Zealot. This Zealot is going to confirm for Snow that he's basically won this game. There's no drones here. I mean, it was fairly obvious when the attack came in and Sulky taps out. What in the world was that game, Artosis? That was, it was wild. For sure, that was a wild game. Like, I, I thought for, like, Snow was just going to lose when that cannon rush got found. It was like a cool idea. But obviously, your Nexus is so slow at that point. The fact that Solky felt the need 
to do like such a wild like ladder build all in when he was already ahead. I don't know about that decision making, but I've questioned Solky before and he's still a champion. So it's like, okay, it, maybe that was a little bit over the top, but now both of them are, have to kind of relook it at, at this matchup because they're both willing to do insane things to each other. I almost wonder if Sulky was going to do that build no matter what. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? And and maybe that's like he just had that build planned for that map. And then when he stopped the weird counter rush, he kind of went, oh, all right. Because this is a pretty genius play. I don't feel like we cast this strategy ever. Like it's another level of cheese. It's the idea is that the Lings come in here. They overpower the cannons. Um, and then the Mutas come in and the game is just over. There's nothing you could do because that Corsair tech is in your main. Mm. I tell you, the, the Lings just did not do what he was looking for here, I think. The two cannons may be throwing him off a little bit. Snow playing a very careful game. I think this would have killed Mini. Oh, I do want to throw that out yeah, there, right? I like so. I think Mini would have skimped a little bit more on everything. And like that might be the mindset that he came in here with. Like, yeah, the, the Protoss is going to be optimizing everything, whereas Snow just played it a little bit more careful and won because of that. Yeah, you know, I don't see why Sulky didn't just go into, frankly, a more boring game. When you stop cannon rushes like that, the Protoss is just not in good shape. You know, go to five or six hatches, just kind of maintain your lead, drone up like crazy. Mm -hmm. You see two cannons that are canceled, 300 minerals total, a late Nexus. I don't think you're required to do anything crazy, but... Yeah. Uh, he came out with that move. He tried to come in there and, and get that killing blow off, and it just totally backfired. And Snow played a pretty safe game from there on out. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, that's quite the game to start off this uh, <laughs> this best of seven on. Uh, I think we're going to jump to a quick commercial break here, guys. And when we come back, we'll see. Can game two be anywhere near as insane? Hello, 진짜 저는 이거 못 해요. 잠깐만. 아, 아, 아. 안녕하세요. 반갑습니다. 지금부터 한 호흡의 한 글자도 틀리지 않고 말하기 정확하게 하게 한 호흡 챌린지를 시작하도록 하겠습니다. 도대체 이걸 왜 하느냐? 이렇게 말하면 이렇게 말하면 틀렸어요. 네. 아, 제가 원래 좀 말을 버벅일 때가 좀 많아 가지고 어 근데 이거 연습하면은 약간 도움 될것 같아요. 집에 가서 혼자 해 보도록 하겠습니다. 예. 안녕하세요. 반갑습니다. 지금부터 한 호흡에 한 글자도 틀리지 않고 정확하게 말하기. 꼭 정확하게 말하기. 어, 말하기 정확하게 하겠네. 아. 실패. 아, 실패. 
조합과 그 다음에 다수의 드라군 토스전이 뭐야? 하이데블러가 뒷받쳐, 뒷받쳐주는 병력 조합을 깨버릴 수는 없거든요 예 그렇기 때문에 자 목적으로 갔어요 위치 다 맞죠? 아 근데 이거 몇 시즌인지 모르겠는데 이거 약간 정윤종이랑 이클립스 아니에요? 아예아 예. 아, 아, 그렇구나 이때가 이제 제가 AS를 시즌2에서 이제 24강 광탈하고 그 다음 시즌에서 첫 4강으로 올라갔었죠 그때 이제 그때도 이제 풀과 오 경기 3대 2로 이겼었던 기억이 있었어요. 네. 오늘 경기 다 기억 없으세요? 웬만한 다 기억 속에 내 얼굴. 더 이상 시간 안 주고 캐리어 모였겠다 정면 돌파입니다 이거. 네 들어오는 네. 선택을 했거든요. 아 이거 할거 같아요. 그 AS의 이영호 1경 8강 제 3세계요. 오 좋습니다. 그때 다들 제가 질 거라고 생각했었는데 저희가 이길 거라고 생각한 건 아마 한 명도 없었을 거예요. 저도 좀 마음 편하게 하고 갔는데 마음이 편해지면은 플레이가 잘 나오더라고요. 주변 거에 비해서 훨씬 더 유리하게 나왔던 그 상황이 그래서 그냥 다 끝낼 수 있었어요. 오 마지막 희망이. 희망이 좀. 오 미타. 자 이거 지금 어, 예 스쿼지가 가서 저격하려고 갔는데 그 각, 네. 각도도 지금 틀렸고요. 아 이건 근데 제가 이게 시즌은 기억이 안 나는데 이거 짭재 상대로 김명훈 상대로. 어예 그러면은. 조일창 상대로 예. 이거, 이거 오경기는 아니었던 것 같고 예 오경기였고 아 근데 이렇게 약간 아 일부 제거하고 아 근데 턴을 진짜 못한다 컨트롤이 좀 아쉽네요 제가 아 지나요 지나요 아 이거 손만 대도 터져요 이제 지게 나온 거 올라갔죠 홍대 형이 나온 거 아포칼립스요 시드는 아니에요 아 진짜요? 네 시즌 8이요. 1세트에서 엄청 자신 있었는데 1세트에서 지고 시작했거든요. 불안불안해가지고 4세트에서 어떻게 해서 끝내려고 전략을 준비해놨는데 그게 잘 먹혀가지고 이겼던 게임이었던 것 같아요. 줄! 아니 수비 미쳤는데요? 장기전에선 이길 수가 없는데요. 와 김민철의! 아 이건 딱 봐도 그냥 전 시즌의 그 변현지 인베이더네요. 너무 많이 봤어요. 네. 사실 처음... 해본 거거든요. 그냥 본진의 처리 짓는 거. 앞마당 게이트를 보고. 근데 그게 판단이 너무 좋았던 것 같아요. 그게. 공 2역. 아, 아카는 잘못된 길로 갔고요. 네. 지금. 네. 자, 지아칸. 상대 아카는 지금 셋밖에 안 보였고요. 네. 자, 리버. 용태형이랑 한거 같은데요. 16강 최종전 마지막 경기야. 5대 0. 옵티마이저. 정말 반반만 나와도 괜찮은 상황에서 아예 풍방을 해버렸어요. 그냥. 한번 맞고, 두번 맞고, 세번 맞고, 네번 맞고, 근데 어떻게 어떻게 네, 이겨가지고 어떤 기억에 남았지? 아, 어, 사강 뭐 물론 쉽지 않은 상대긴 하거든요, 작년 초. 근데 어, 모든 사람들이 다 알고 있는 오프 저막 작년 초. 제가 또 이기고 결승 올라가겠습니다. 많이 졌거든요. 여태까지 매번 그동안 많이 떨어지고 그랬었기 때문에 이번에야 말로 좀 걷고. 살수 있는 기회가 왔으면 좋겠습니다. 웰컴 백 에브리바디. 이츠 타임 투 고 인투 게임 넘버 2. 아이 돈 띵 아이브 에버 콰이트 캐스트 댓 인터랙션 댓 위 핫 댓 댓 댓 댓 댓 댓 댓 댓 댓 댓 댓 댓 댓 댓 댓 댓 댓 댓 댓 댓 댓 댓 댓 댓 댓 댓 댓 댓 댓 댓 댓 댓 댓 댓 댓 댓 댓 댓 댓 Off two hatch muta. That that game I think has never happened in Pro Starcraft. <laughs> yeah, you're you're uh, definitely thank you right for about support that. Support on Patreon, by the way. Appreciate you. Man, um, I was looking at that. I was like, is that us again? No, no. Okay, we're right. <laughs> Not that one. Oh, another picture I'm of you, tasteless. The clown, <laughs> right there. <laughs> you, you got your tendrils just right. Um, yeah. Yeah, that 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 was a wild one. I tell you, I. I I want to see them run the full gamut of games. I want to see a Hive game, Tasis. I want to see a Reaver game. I want to see Guardians made today, okay? And let's have a three-hatch Hydra bust in there. Let's just do everything. <laughs> let's see all the possible types of PVZs we can have. Now, Snow takes that game one to zero. One that I think Sulky basically had uh, until he got a little bit too greedy, a little bit too crazy with that build. We're going to go to Retro now. This map is very different. It'll have to create a very different looking game as we continue on here in the semi-final with Snow versus Soul King.
Okay, both players sharing the bottom. Snow in the bottom left, Sulky in the bottom right. Before we get into this match itself, guys, in the little bit of downtime that we have, we just want to say thank you, everybody who's been supporting us on Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash ASL English. Uh, we would not be able to do this without you guys. You're the best. If you haven't uh, signed up already, consider it. It would mean the world to us. You're helping the ASL and competitive StarCraft in the English language stay alive. Yeah, thank you very much, guys. It's It's been such a treat, such a pleasure. This has been a fantastic season. Uh, I feel like everyone has kind of echoed that this season uh, in particular has been a lot of fun. And I feel like this season, I feel like we're kind of building this new set of like storylines nowadays, right? We went through that huge era of Flash dominating everything. And then it kind of calmed down. And I feel like we got really weird results for a little bit. I love Royal. I love JYJ. I love some of these guys that did win championships in that time. But it feels like it's kind of normalizing into what we actually expect. Things like Hero and Sulky getting to the end of the tournament all the time, right? Like Mini, Mini getting up there a lot. Rush getting up there a lot. And I feel like the, like this season's awesome. And this season is going to build into the next season in a really interesting way. Like the, the, It feels like we have a very fresh landscape in the pro scene right now, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does feel like we're really in a very, very new era and things are different right now. You know, we don't know if or when Flash is going to come back, but mm -hmm. the games have been just insane regardless. It's been wild to see who's going to come out on top, how competitive it's been. Um, and, you know, it, it, it's a, just another reminder that StarCraft is in a really healthy state here in Korea. The viewership is off the hook in Korea, outside of Korea, um, and the games have been great. So it's a good time to be a StarCraft fan. Yeah. So uh, thank you, guys. And uh, if you do want to support, check out that Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash ASL English. Now, taking a look at this game on Retro, it's just a kind of a blind Nexus first here from Snow. But he's he's running into Hatch first, so should be fine. This is another uh, gas after second hatchery. You know, it's funny. Um, this is definitely one of the, the builds a Zerg has to have at its toolkit. I want to see how many more games we have where he does this. Because this is usually not like the main way Zergs play. Mm -hmm. They're usually doing three hatches and occasionally they'll throw in the, the hatch gas. Hatch gas usually means it's going to be a very explosive game where the Zerg's going to try to really uh, trip the, the Protoss up early. But if the Protoss survives whatever the Zerg's going to try to do, usually the Protoss is in a winning position. So this is really a, an opening that generally means the the Protoss, the Zerg is going to try to stop the Protoss before you know mm -hmm. there's a storm and, and eight gateways up and, and a push ready to go. Where a lot of Zergs play the game where they try to survive the big push and then coast ahead. I don't know if you saw this video, Tasteless, but Jinjin Jin actually translated uh, Jadong taking a look at modern uh, PVZ and mentioning that he feels like you have to uh, open pretty aggressively right now to get the edge on Protoss. Like, aggressive openings are definitely a bit better than the macro openings. Maybe that's part of what we're seeing here from Solky going for that quick gas a couple times. Yeah, I did see that video, and I was curious about it. You know, it's funny, but he was also a Zerg that I think his style isn't working as well in PvZ For anymore, sure. Yeah, you know? yeah, uh, yeah. For, for him specifically, he's had a tough time kind of making the... He looks like the old Jadong. He definitely brought that back, but it's not as good. Mm -hmm. um, things are happening pretty quickly here. This yeah. is two-hatch Hydra. <laughs> so this is like the fastest Hydra bust you can have. Because one-hatch Hydra isn't a thing. So... This is not, not only is this a cheese, it's like a crazy fast cheese. Now, Snow opened up with Nexus first into Forge. He, there are speedlings coming out here. The pro block is good enough. I don't think he can get in there and do mm -hmm. that much. But I also don't think Protoss is going to send another probe out. This is a Hydra bust that's engineered to hit um, before the Corsair can scout. That's mm -hmm. what's scary about this. You have way less, but you just can't see it coming. So you have seconds to react unless you really uh, have the mental fortitude to just like preempt the, the, the Hydras and make a cannon, which Protoss, Protoss won't really do. Mm -hmm. By the way, Artosis, you know how like we call them mutas? Yeah. Or, or muties or mutas? I didn't know that in Korea and they call them hitties. 
Hitties? And, and now Ultralisk Udies, yeah, or Ulies. <laughs> Ulies and what is the other one? Hitty. Hitty? Why do they call them yeah. hitties? <laughs> what? It's like a meme out here, man. Oh, okay. This is a two hatch hitty rush right now. Two two hatch um, hitty rush. Okay. I've heard them call. Hitty, I've man. heard Koreans yeah, call them mutal before, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mutal. never heard hitties. No, it, it, the slang has changed now. Yeah, damn. Now, the, the Zoomer the Brood War this. players, man. <laughs> <laughs> so he's banked a lot of hydras. So it almost looks like the rush isn't even coming yet. Yeah. So this is really trying to hit the Protoss. It's almost like a glass jaw. Like, if you just get in there and pop the cannons, it's over. Mm -hmm. well, Notice that the Overlords are not looming outside the front. That's another thing that telegraphs the rush. He's going to try to come in here and scout. He's like, oh, I care about late game. Now he's going <laughs> to see the uh, the Hydras. Oh, man. So this is going to just hit like a train on this expansion. Well, he gets it's all going to come down to this. He gets his probes drilled out. Let's see if that's going to be enough. The third cannon trying to finish up. He's going to be able to bust that pretty quickly here. Hydra's pulling back. The probes getting reduced a little bit. Two cannons remain that he's having a hard time getting towards. Yeah, these two cannons are extremely well placed. They're just not in a spot that's comfortable to reach. The Zerg has decided to pull back. No, hold on. He's going to move in one more time. But Snow immediately meets him there. One cannon goes down. There's still one cannon remaining. I, there's four more warping it in. They're all going to warp in at different times. They're going to be a bit staggered. He's going to hit again, and the Zealot gets stuck in the back. Another Zealot's going to come out. He's pulling all the probes now. He needs to pick off any weak Hydras and whip right back around. All you can do in this moment is keep making cannons. It's not clear because of the, what the Observer's not showing us if there's other tech coming. Mm. Snow's also hitting. Okay, he kills the Forge, by the way, so no more cannons unless the Forge was remade, remade in the main. He does have a fourth cannon that's coming up. He still has uh, a couple Zealots there as well. And it, I think he did get an Overlord, but there is no supply block at the moment. Those Corsairs still flying around. Sulky is pretty damn all in here. Dives on that Morphing Cannon once again. Does get rid of it. So it's down to three cannons. I assume the Forge has been remade, but I don't see cannons here yet. Oh, click on the buildings. Please show us. <laughs> so he has Zealot, Zealot Speed's done, which is nice because the Zealots can actually plow into the um, Hydras. And cannons are being remade. Remember, this is two hatch. There is a third hatchery being made in an expansion. The Zerg is on effectively no drones. Mm -hmm. He dives in and kills one warping cannon. Notice that Snow is even making cannons behind this. Yeah. He just needs to try to get something where he can manage the damage that's being put in the front. He's still on one gateway. Probes are not mining. Well, most of them aren't mining. Most of them are in the front here. Dude, I think I think he's held I it, think man. Sulky's has got. Wow, he did it. He did it. Oh my god, dude, that'll teach him to hoodie rush. Hitty, hitty, hitty. Hoodie. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm, I, <laughs> hey, young guys, I'm one of you or something. What is this? My my fellow he's young like, brood wars. Is it called Wars-ers? a Haribo rush? I'm like, no, those are gummy bears. <laughs> Artosis, you boomer. <laughs> oh Still, man, I gotta say, you know those first two cannons. They don't look that impressive where they were placed. I mean, the first two in the in the entire game. Looking mm -hmm. at it later on, it seemed like the ideal spot yeah. to be safe. Keep in mind, Retro has really close rush distances too. Oh yeah. So it's you know not the craziest thing to do a, a rush like that there. Snow's halfway there, dude. This is wild. Okay, yeah. Uh, Sulky tried two very aggressive like two hatch all ins right in a row. I don't think he stays on that. You know what I mean? Like, uh, Sulky has a big yeah. range. I'm not expecting for him to just do that four times in a row and for Snow to just, like, moonwalk into the finals. I I, I feel like Sulky will bring it back and try something uh, a little bit more standard coming up here as well. And I hope so, because while it's cool to learn about the weird slang of these new rushes and everything, like, it, it, it feels like Snow is just, his defense is a bit too strong for these. You know, it's kind of crazy. He didn't have a forge done for a while. He was relying on, like, the two or three uh, zealots that were there. He just had the second gate in his main. Um, look at the two cannons in the back. He really can't get there. Mm -hmm. He made sure to have the probes drilled through. 
that's probably the most important part of the rush is that you're interfering with the surface area the Hydras want to try to um, take advantage of. Did he actually finish plus one too, I wonder? I don't think so. I think I think the Forge went down before plus one, but maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, I feel like you cancel that and just make cannons, but yeah. it's so close it could be tempting, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I think he actually finished plus one. Look, you, the Observer wants right. to know too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Observers, this guy's clearly a Protoss player. <laughs> yeah, he wants to know, am I supposed to cancel here? Yeah, he's like, I always cancel that, okay. But yeah. I guess you don't want to cancel unless you just start to see them really focus it down, right? Because otherwise they know that it's not an important target. Mm -hmm. We're just going to rewatch this whole so, game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like that last uh, highlight we had earlier. Yeah. So... Snow is, is doing a great job. These are games where we haven't even seen a Templar made yet. That's how short they are. That's true. That's, That's true. crazy. Yeah. I don't know. Let's see. Our next map is going to be Blitz Y, I believe. So a two-player map. It'd be interesting to see if Solky has something crazy planned there. Quick commercial break, guys. When we come back, game three. Colour 만들어봐, 네 의자의 꿀자세. 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 welcome back everybody right now snow is up two to zero and what i gotta say is just an insane series um we have not had any late game. Uh, a lot of this is Sulky. What he's trying to do isn't working at all. Yeah, he's he's been pretty damn aggressive, pretty pretty damn cheesy, and I think he does need to pull it back a little bit. I do again feel like maybe he's still in the mode of playing against Mini. These guys have really different styles. Mini like cuts so many corners, whereas Snow plays a bit more safely. So maybe Sulky needs to go towards greed, which is exactly what Mini is always punishing, right? Maybe this is, like, extra tough because he just played Mini in the last round. His, his mindset is in how to beat him, and it feels like he's brought over the same types of ideas against Snow, who's a completely different player. Yeah, Snow, we don't know how his late game is going to be, how the, the push from the Protoss is going to be versus the Zerg, because Sulky's not letting the game go on for that long. Um, it's not that it's wrong to do these builds either. In fact, if they were working out really nicely, Solky would be in an incredible position. 
But so far, it seems like Sulky's going to have to go into, excuse me, go into macro. Um, and you never want to be predictable uh, based off your last few games in StarCraft. Mm -hmm. Ideally, you're able to randomize your behavior well enough that the other player doesn't know what's coming. I feel like we're not going to have a cheese artosis from the Zerg at least. How about you? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I really do think it's time to pull it back and maybe just play a more normal game and see where you end up here. Because these, like, absolutely balls-the-wall, crazy, insane builds. Yeah, you're going to catch someone who has one cannon instead of two, I guess. Right? And that's that's not snow, unfortunately, for, for Solky here. Uh, I still think that if Solky course corrects, there's a reasonable chance that he could still win this and go to the finals. Yeah, he has been one of the few players... I think it was in StarCraft 2 to reverse sweep, being down 0-3 and then come back 4-3. In a best three, of seven. I think like, he's the only one that ever did it. In a best of seven. I think he's the only one that ever did it. Yeah. yeah. Um, which is, that's insane. That's statistically, it, it never doesn't happens. happen. <laughs> that, a, that a pro 3-0 somebody and the other guy's like, I win four games now. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he did it. And he did it in the finals, uh, GSL finals, way back in the day. So, I mean, if somebody could come back in this, it would be him. Game three in this match is so important for Sulky. He needs to start to try to get something on his scoreboard mm -hmm. or Snow is going to have so much room to be creative, to cheese, to, to, to play super defensive. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. We're going to be going on to Blitz Y, our third map, another map with only two spawns here, Artosis. Yeah, let's get into it. Uh, what do you think about that, Artosis? Wow, it's only Put two spawns? On here. Oh, yeah. How many of those maps do we have? Wow. Okay, in the bottom right is Snow. In the top right is Sulky. You know, you know, hey, when... And, oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, no, you go ahead. Well, I was going to say something that's completely worthless, so if you have something, like, to add to this, then go <laughs> right ahead, but... Uh... <laughs> um, I, I just wanted to say, uh, you know, on this map, it's, it's a lot of the same things that apply in one versus one. Very easy to scout a uh, Hydra tech unless you really go all like the long way around to try to hide it. Um, I don't know if there's good cheeses on this map or not. This is one I'm still unpacking a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, PVZ early game can be pretty complicated. Like we were talking about before the matches actually started, like before game one. So uh, Snow doesn't seem to be inclined to do anything other than fast expand. Mm -hmm. He's done forge expand with, with the, the, the cheese. But, you know, when that doesn't work, you just make a nexus and go right back into the game. Um, this game, it looks like he's going to go for the gateway expand. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll see if that ends up working out well for him here. But, uh, you know, something something I was just thinking about, Tasis, when I was trying to interrupt you with this. Like, uh, it's funny because when you were explaining to me, I thought you said that they call mutas hitties. And that's why I got so confused. I'm like, oh, I've heard him call them mutals. That's really weird. But uh, I can't get over. They... It, I, I'm sorry. I just I have to check this now because I can't stop thinking about it. I'm not going to be able to cast these games. Yeah. You said yeah. that they call ultras ulies. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, they call them ulies. I have even <laughs> less respect now for ultralisk rushers, man. You're like, oh, I'm going to go yeah, ulies. Yeah. We're going to go ulies. <laughs> it's like what? <laughs> Ultra is like a yeah, great. All your Marines It's a great being... name, you know. Like, oh, he's going ultras. Like that sounds sick. Whereas, oh, he's going to go ulies. It's like what? <laughs> yeah, imagine losing 10 Marines to an Uli. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, by the way, this turned out to be a forge instead of uh, a gateway. Yeah. So this is uh, an... Un you, did he scout after Pylon and I missed it? Or was it a later no, scout? No, he sent it back. It was a later scout. Yeah. Okay. So usually they scout after Pylon if they're going to forge expand. Mm -hmm. But this is going to be a game where it's going to be a quick nexus. I guess there might be a timing where if you wanted to get up there and do any kind of cannon play, you could. But Snow has got a lot of very fine-tuned builds. It's funny because everything else isn't cheesy, but it's kind of genius. He started out with that wacky cheese. Yeah. Like, it's also funny because we saw Mini do something like this, too. Mm -hmm. These are cheeses that it, it, it felt like came about literally in, like, 2004 or five when Protoss has just started to kind of get the hang of fast expanding and making cannons, but also being like, well, I can cannon rush here. 
And there was just a series of bad cannon rushes that Protoss tried. <laughs> and then everybody that just played the game enough would never lose to them again. And then after the game's been out for 25 years, they're coming back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's... uh. This is just the rotation of everything. It's not just the meta game, but it's like also, you know, like fashion. It's like you see like cargo pants coming back and stuff right now. It's just like, yeah, yeah man, we gotta we gotta recycle old ideas to to freshen things up. Yeah, these probes are wearing Jinko jeans, Artosis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The coolest pants the in the world. The coolest ever, man. <laughs> so well, they definitely wear Jenko jeans when they do those cannon rushes, for sure. <laughs> no doubt about that. Um, so, Zerg's taking a third hatchery. Um, and I guess one of the only two bases you would reasonably expand to. This one's going to be in the far corner. We don't really see Snow's tech yet. We're waiting for that cybernetic score to get done. Uh, he has gone for Stargate every time, which is really like a mainline opening. There are other ones you can do without Stargate, but again, you're sort of deviating from the norm. Artosis and I, as we've casted this, we've kind of stated that Mini seems to be the high-risk Protoss, the corner cutter. Mm -hmm. Like, he's the guy that, you know, won an ASL by basically just not making cannons. He's, like, getting his core <laughs> and his wall in and sometimes starting the Stargate before the first cannon's up uh, and really punishing Zerg that way. Snow is very much more like, uh, if he was a fighter type, he's like the Ryu of Protosses. Ah, uh, yeah. Like, he's like a, a main Shoto character. He's not Akuma. He doesn't have any weird fireballs that, you know, do other stuff. He is playing the game properly, and he's not taking any risks, but he's definitely in a hurry to still tack up. And it seems like, at least for now, this is going to be the first normal game we're playing. It does It does look pretty pretty normal here, right? Like, he's got his layer up. Uh, the Spire has been started in the main base. It, I don't think it'll be like a Mutalisk base play, but we'll see. And, well, he does get that Zergling speed, so he's going to be able to shut down this probe at least. But I would love to see just, like, a straight macro game here. I feel like this is a map where, you know, once Protoss secures that third base up on that high ground, it's really hard to kill them. And, they, you know, it, I feel like the game can pretty easily go late game from there. So it's going to be air weapons with Corsairs and plus one attack on the ground. So this is a little bit of an older uh, build. Still very good today. Really, um, you know, the way that Bisu taught everybody how to play the game in the early days. There is a second cannon here because, again, Snow is just a cautious player. He opts to get that out uh, as the Corsair comes across the map at Scouts. And he's going to see that there's no Hydra Den, that this, there's a second gas started. Uh, he's going to confirm where the third hatchery is and probably have to loop this back home. One thing about this map is that it seems like it's hard to scout everything with the Corsairs. Like, yeah. It's hard to scout the top right main and then also confirm the hatchery in the top left, uh, mm. or wherever that is. Well, his Corsair is over there, bullying an Overlord at the moment. Uh, flies right next to another one with that secondary Corsair, so it looks like he will get at least a couple kills here, probably. Well, maybe not that second one, as the Scourge are coming down. Uh, but yeah, Snow gonna run away. Sulky does have, you know, a little bit of map control there with the Speedlings up in the front, and... I'm liking it. I'm, I'm glad. I was actually getting a little bit nervous, Tasteless, right? Because, like... Yesterday with, with Sharp versus Hero, it was kind of fast. You know, we had like a bunch of rush wins where it's just like Zerglings coming in the game ends. Um, watching these first two games, I was worried that like we aren't going to see any spells cast. You know, like I don't need spells cast yeah. every game, but I need them some games. Yes, we do. Well, I, I want to get into, you know, more of a normal PV. Oh, hold on. He made mutas. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I, th I initially just decided that this was going to be only Scourge, but <laughs> with Mutas coming out, it's important that we have ample defense. Now, five is not a crazy amount, but there's more Lings being made from this. Sometimes yeah. Protosses over-defend um, in their main, and you can just fly into the natural and kill them. Mm -hmm. And uh, don't forget, five Mutas does one-shot a probe, so if he starts that harassment, he can deal damage really, really quickly. Uh, the Ling's coming back with those Mutalisks, and yeah, he will be able to force those Zealots back into the wall. Looks like a secondary cannon there, and we don't... Should he be making another cannon at his natural? I feel like there's, like, a little bit of room for Sulky there to get in and do damage. Uh, he, he might want to. We've got the DT coming out. You know, I gotta say, Sulky's playing a pretty misleading game here. I really felt like there was gonna be a lot more aggression. 
and he certainly made it look like it from the Protoss' perspective, but I think he's actually droning up with this. It's making the Protoss keep making Corsairs and stay back, but I don't see more Scourge. I see Hydra starting pretty early, and I see a lot of drones. Mm -hmm. When the Protoss starts to see groups of Scourge and Mutas flying around, you, you have to, like, almost like a turtle going into its shell. You just have to hide and um, just start to make cannons and, and pool Corsairs because otherwise you could lose the game. But mm -hmm. he's not doing this kind of aggressive style. In fact, he's going hard into Hydra Tech here. The overmade Corsairs could cause a gas deficit where there's no Psy Storm if a Hydra push comes in. Mm-hmm. Well, those uh, pre-storm bus timings can be, like, really, really strong if they overcommit on the Corsairs. Uh, you know, like, it, once you get that big, like, cloud of Hydralisks, you really do need the size Storms to help out. Now, Snow is going to start moving out with some of these Zealots, it looks like. Uh, oh, look at that. He's he's left a High Templar kind of in a funny location at the bottom of his main. I think he wants to, if, if Sulky dives in, get, like, a, a really nasty Storm that's not expected. The DT is going to come up here and see the Hydras. That's all he has to check for. He's going to see there's no sunks or anything as well. It's not like the Zerg's trying to turtle uh, and defend and, and, you know, do something weird like tech in a hive, which means the Zerg's going to be comfortable taking a fight on the map. And Snow's getting all of his gateways. He's basically almost to where he needs to be. He just has to get a Robo and Dragoons with range after he has enough Templars with Storm. All right, now uh, finally moving out to put a little bit of pressure on Sulky as well, getting ready for this fourth base. He's going to take that kind of forward position. And, you know, I, I talk a lot about, like, uh, if Protoss gets up there and holds that third, how that's really hard to attack into. But, I mean, if you have Hydra Lurker, Protoss really can't attack through these these little things or up that little ramp either, right? Like, this feels like right. a map that could get very, very turtly if, if nothing crazy happens. Snow has kept that DT alive. He might try to go in and get some drones. And we're getting to a real PVZ here, Artosis. Mm -hmm. Zerg taking a fourth. Um, yeah, I, I don't know exactly how the Protoss pushes on this map. It doesn't look like it's a comfortable map to move big armies through. Same true. Same is true for Zerg, for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you know, Snow is really massing up to a, a very strong army, but look at Sulky's macro right now. He's very close in supply to Snow already. Uh, Snow hasn't been able to get off of his side of the map as of yet, but I think, you know, with his Psy Storm, he's going to be able to push forward and at least take a third, but I don't think that there's any, like, attack timing opening up, right? It doesn't look like Sulky is weak anywhere. Both sides are playing really well. Snow's not pushing out too soon. Sulky's basically setting up opportunities to counterattack, depending on which way Snow wants to filter his army out. There's a lot of lurkers being made, so we know that, you know, turtling is going to be the next phase of the game. And I don't have a lot of experience seeing pros play late game on this map, yeah. PVZ, but it does feel like it's hard for the Protoss to get anywhere of use. Like, are you going to be able to hit up onto the high ground with those lurkers? I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah, is I, it a game I, where you want to just try to play into stopping the, the fifth base instead of the fourth? I think so, yeah. Like, I think you basically are... It, one, if you're both turtling like this, almost every game I've seen has just been Zerg, like, being like, oh, crap, and throwing everything at the third base and trying to break it. Because I think, you know, if, if Snow goes up here, right, he holds that third base, and he just kind of grows. The left side of the map where it's ground, uh, you know, like all ground that you can walk through, it's not that big. So it's actually like, I feel like Snow can really zone out half of the map very easily. And when you start getting like the same amount of bases as Zerg, that's going to become very difficult to fight through that many size Storms. Okay, the Corsairs are pushing now. They need to cover the Templars. I don't think we're going to have a Muta switch where they snipe that, but that's why he's moving in this formation. This is like a heavy <laughs> lurker turtle play this is just so hard to break into mm -hmm. now i did see this video where snow is teaching people how to push and he basically said you just want to keep cycling storms onto their army and not fully engaging yeah so let's see if that's what we get here like you just storm and then you don't even really try to push you just back up and then get ready for storms again most of the defenses for zerg really come down to the lurkers mm-hmm 
And, you know, the Storm is a renewable resource. That's where you're kind of getting your value. So I love that he's actually said that. Because I, I feel like I see way too many Protosses that are just like, I have to kill him now. And, you know, they just end up losing one big army and they never really can rebuild to the same strength. Snow is getting into a very funny position up here. I'm not sure that he should be attacking in there, Tasteless. That looks unbelievably hard to break. Yeah, I mean, I don't think you're ever going to get into that. But I think he's just roaming. He's going to try to force the Lurkers to reposition. It's always worth mentioning that StarCraft Brood War really is mechanically the most punishing when both sides get big armies. And so forcing Lurkers to unburrow and reset up and, and you know, just trying to hit up as many different locations as possible is pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, so... Oh, go ahead. Yes. Um... I want to see if these islands in the center right are going to uh. play a role here. <laughs> yeah, that's because, actually what I was going to ask oh, you is, is who actually wins those islands? Like, does Zerg have a stronger claim to them, like with Nidus coming up, or are the speed shuttles going to be strong enough? I think it, it's it's all going to come down who sets up shop there first. Oh, okay. Oh, is he going to get these DTs in here? Oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 oh. Look at that. And, and Sulky's so fast to react, too. Mm. Muta's actually flying to that bottom left as Snow is starting to set that up. A lot of roaming here for Snow. Those DTs should end up getting cleaned up. But Snow is now maxed out, man. He is looking just fantastic. Tries a storm drop here. <laughs> He'll get like one drone maybe. No, two drones and the Scourge. Oh. So that's kind of nice. I think we have a drop over here. <gasps> so now, now this is a problem because... You know, keep in mind, Zerg, they can just pick up everything with their overlords. They're always going to have a lot of overlords. So, in other words, they always have a lot of dropships and shuttles. Mm -hmm. Even though overlords are worse than dropships and shuttles in a lot of ways, they always have a lot. Protoss never have more than one or two shuttles. So, it's going to be hard to ever, like, land on that base with ground and take it. Mm -hmm. And this may be what's prompting Snow to start to try to sprinkle storms over in these base and in, in these, um, in, in this turtle position up here. I don't, I don't think anything is, is breakable on either side at the moment. And I, I, I believe I said earlier I wanted to see Guardians. I bet you we see Guardians this game, Tasteless. This feels like a situation for Guardians in, in ZVP, if I could be so bold. You are so bold. You are so brave, <laughs> Um So he, he could make some Guardians here. I don't know that he even needs to. No. Here's the thing. There's not going to be a whole lot of places left to expand to. Mm -hmm. Guardians won't... Well, I guess it wouldn't hurt necessarily. He could maybe try to hit that third base with it. Or I guess... Is that actually the Protoss's fourth or third? I can't remember which one he took first. But um, for the time being, Snow can basically just stay out in the front and keep doing moves like this and slowly um, causing the defenses to deteriorate, which means you're going to have to spend more money on Lurkers. But with the economy that Sulky has and setting up those those bottom bases, I think we're going to get into like a plague grind as well, where it's like Dark Storm plague, yeah, just all over the place. So that's like kind of like the Zerg, the Zerg equivalent of just storming stuff and walking back is just throwing down plagues and being like, oh, you can't snipe the lurkers with the, with dragoons anymore. Here's a Dark Swarm, and then I think we get into Reavers tasteless. But the question that I haven't asked yeah. you now for a couple years. Should snow go carriers? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the old cats are back. Um, so, usually what this means is that the Protoss basically can't win with a push. Zerg is going to have the Plague and the Dark Swarm, and he actually has two Defiler mounds. He's getting them all. Uh, one for each upgrade for the Defiler. And this means the late game for Protoss is shuttle speed. Reavers as well. You can get multiple Robos. You can get multiple shuttles. Multiple shuttles are still... It's pretty not doable to try to get into these island bases when mm -hmm. you try to do it. Well, but he can try. Yeah, Let's he's see what trying. He, can do. He, he drops off quite a bit here, but the spread of lurkers? Some very good size storms for sure. Those were ridiculously good size storms. But now the Nidus is up. And I'm not sure which end of the yeah, Nidus that the was, if that was the first end, but like with a Nidus up, man... That, this is actually why I'm asking about the carriers. It's like normally a joke, but here I'm like, I don't, I don't know how else you're really supposed to break this with a Nidus up. No, that you just never break that spot. 
Dude, there's You're just three never bases. Get in there, I don't like, think. <laughs> I, I think you, you need to like storm drop it over and over. Well, you just need to keep storm dropping it. Oh, okay. If you can storm drop the drones over and over, maybe you can slow them down. I mean, God, we're getting into like the real abstract here, but ooh, that was sick. Oh, he's like trying to storm the scourge to save it. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't quite work out there. Shuttle might end up getting away. Oh, no, the Hydra does snipe it there before it does. Uh, but now we have double robo. We have mass cannons coming up. More gates being added by snow. He is still controlling uh, the middle of the map, so he might be able to get 9 o'clock, right? And so that would give him an additional gas. He'll still be a little bit behind Sulky there, but, uh, you know, that, that might be something he needs to look into. So he's making tons of cannons everywhere. And I think what Protoss is going to try to do is grab the center left base. He's making gateways and cannons everywhere. So he wants to have Psy Storm. He's getting Reavers out now. Now the Reavers, you know, they can actually hang with Zerg in the late game. They can force the Lurkers to relocate. They can be picked up and avoid um, uh, the Dark Swarms or even the Plagues. But... Basically, this is going to come down to Zerg gets the center right, and Protoss has to get the center left. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I it, it, it feels oh, no like everything is so unbreakable for both sides. Like, anyone that attacks in is going to be so cost inefficient against the amount of splash damage, all the spellcasters and everything. Snow going to try to continue to push up here. I do love this from the Reavers. I'm sure he's going to get all sorts of upgrades like that, that Reaver damage and everything. He is the greatest Reaver player. So I was definitely looking forward to seeing a game that looked like this. But what he needs there, yeah, Tasteless, is... is he needs a couple Guardians on hold position to hit the Reavers, okay? I'm, <laughs> I, won't, crazy. I won't give this so up. Bad. I won't give this up. He needs some Guardians. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so funny. Like... Oh, look at that. You can hit that from there. Oh, wild. I didn't appreciate how close that was. Okay. Well, you know, here's something to note, Artosis. Yeah. At least half of those patches are like a stone throw away from Psy Storm coming from those mm -hmm. Templars and melting those workers. Um, so that, that base that Zerg has, it's like going to be very hard to mine efficiently from it and take all those minerals. He could be storming that the whole game. Oh Ooh, my god. You got a triple. Really juicy scarabs coming out. And th these are plagued as well. So very low health on everything, but Snow's Micro definitely top notch, picking off a ton there. But the plague grinding is happening on the other side. A lot of these units are going to be like one health. Yeah, this is going to be a game where we're just going to see everything from Protoss plagued the whole time. There's going to be lots of Reavers being made, lots of Storms being thrown down here. And and they just start to try to grind each other down. Now, there is still one Hail Mary play here for the Zerg, and that's if they can manage to take over the spot where we see this roaming army here. Mm -hmm. They'll only be able to take over it if there's not enough Templars and Reavers. So Protoss has to be reinforcing constantly. You cannot afford to lose Observers. I don't see an Observer here, by the way. Yeah. Am I, I wrong? Yeah, I think, I think he must have lost it. Maybe it just kind of got picked off in the course of the battle but he has double robo so or at least double robo maybe even has more at this point so i think it's not going to be too much of an issue for him to continually get that that vision in there well here's the thing if zerg gets his center left base i think the game ends again anyways yeah yeah because protoss will just dry up they, they won't have the resources we did see earlier that Snow was not mining gas from the bottom left. I don't know if oh, he's, he's still not doing it. That's a mistake. So this is probably this is probably why he doesn't have enough Archons and Templars right now. Man. This is him. It's actually crazy to see that of all players, Snow is having this problem right now. That's a huge blunder, though. The fact that he has no gas mining down there, that is missing out a huge amount of his resources and the most important resources as well. Sometimes when you get such a big economy, you can miss things like this for a bit, right? He has a mineral-only base, so that might, he might be like, damn, I really do have a lot of minerals, don't I? And he's kind of not m realizing it because of that. And sometimes when you get in the games this crazy and you're both maxed out, you're almost grateful to have a certain amount of minerals banked up. Mm -hmm. um, can he do this? He could actually shoot at one of his own zealots. All right, he's not going to style on like that. <laughs> no globetrotters so here. Take 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Zerg's gonna take the the center left. Protoss has to try to push in here and reclaim this. Still no gas being mined there. Oh man, I'm so sad he's not mining gas there. Because right now it feels like Solky's starting to take over the game a little bit. Great job with the Scourge there. He's gonna force some kills onto these Reavers, but they do get some value. Oh my God, crazy Oof. storm there. Still being so cost efficient. What is what is the kill move from Sulky? Is it actually just turtling nine o'clock? Yeah. I mean, it, he could over time start to sh chuck dark swarms down and plagues down and try to advance on the base that's just south of this screenshot here. But I don't even know if he has to do that. Zerg has like 60, 65 percent of the map right now as far as economy goes. Yeah, this is definitely a tough one. More plagues come out. Oh, I think he might have got those Reavers back in before they got plagued. Oh, one of them. <laughs> one of them did end up getting plagued there. Yeah. But that if is... You do uh, it just right. Yeah. It, that, that is a, no, a crazy-looking army. Look at that. It's like six High Templars, two Reavers, a bunch of Archons in there. It just pure cost efficiency from Snow. Okay. He's going to fire some more Scarabs in there. He might want to try to go onto the island, or not the island, the center left base itself. Really good targeting here from Snow. You can see he's still the best Reaver user, mm. even in this matchup. Just able to get so much damage out here. Now, no resources have really been soaked up at that base in the center left. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I'm glad the Observer keeps going back here. He's yeah. just not mining gas. And I, you know, basically the Zerg's job is done. Mm-hmm. Now, these minerals that are on the uh, the side here, they haven't really been taken advantage of, so I guess there is that. They're, in some ways, they're almost even in income because the center right base can't really be utilized the same way. Yeah. But I think that Snow may be too far out of range to push in here. He needs Reavers to basically get through what I want to say is like 25 to 30 lurkers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so crazy. And, you know, with these uh, defilers in here, it's just it's so hard to attack in. You know, the Archon does do splash damage under the Swarm, but its main attack does not, just so, so people understand that. Like, they're useful, but they're not perfect. So, like, you see he's just trying to grind through right now with those Reavers, and he's doing a great job, but Sulky's income is just absurd. Yeah, he just has so much money, and Snow has a lot of minerals and, unfortunately, not a lot of gas because he just isn't mining from that uh, third or fourth base. And so every time it feels like maybe the Protoss has made some progress, the next wave moves in. Here we go. Man, a lot of Lings coming up here as well. Uh, I love how he has his army hold position kind of spread out there. So there's like layers that this attack move has to go through. The Reavers in the back getting a ton of value as they come up into those Zealots. Big storms going down as well. Damn, what a wild game. And he's still not mining gas in the bottom left, man. Oh, so, this might be. Oh, he just set him back there. He's going to put five in. It doesn't even make any sense. <laughs> so his gas is going to kick back in. But is it too late? I think it is. It might be. I'll answer my own question. I mean, it just now the Zerg. Now you're fighting to get back into this position where had he had enough Templars and Archons, maybe there's a game where he could take the center left and we kind of see how this math pans out. Mm. He is being pushed back, though. It's a very slow push but he's lost ground in the center. With that additional gas, like, you know, maybe maybe he can still make something happen. He has a huge, huge mineral bank here still. So, you know, I, I hope he can get some value out of his zealots and everything as well. And obviously he needs a lot of minerals for the amount of scarabs he's gonna need to win this game. <laughs> uh, Zerg's gonna try to advance onto this. This could be a little bit of an overextension. I don't know how many lurkers exactly are above here. So both sides trade out a little bit of supply. They're both going to spike back up in a second. Hey, Tasteless. The problem is that right now, Protoss can only make Zealots. So it's like, well, that's yeah. not going to help against Lurkers. Well, it's this, just not. This kind of reminds me a little bit of, like, really late game Terran versus Terran, where you get this giant amount of minerals. And it's like, well, you build a lot of turrets. But then you have to try to figure out ways to utilize minerals because everything just becomes so gas-based in the Supreme Light game, just like we see here. And I just wonder if you have, is there like something you can do here with those extra minerals? Like, can you make a group of Zealots and like, is there some sort well, of like no, suicide mean, you, maneuver or do you fly speed shuttles into your opponent's main with them to kill tech? Like, is there a move like that for all this mineral bank? 
I mean, you could, but you're just not supposed to have this many minerals banked up because he was supposed to be mining his gas the whole time. Mm, okay. You, you, you're, 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 he has a dispro more disproportionate amount of minerals because he didn't take advantage of the resources that were on his side of the map. So you see he's at 3K, just barely at 500 uh, gas. Mm -hmm. He could have, with the extra minerals and gas, been like storm dropping the whole time. Or, yeah, sure, fly shuttles with some zealots there, like go into the main. You know, just circumvent all the uh, the scourge. Oh my God, he's gonna kill Oof. those probes. <laughs> well, I don't think it's a, a lack of probes that's hurting Snow here. In fact, I wonder if he wants to trade some out for more supply. But he's not even maxed right now. No, he, he's certainly not. Things are gonna start to disappear resource-wise on the map. I feel like Sulky's pretty much got this. Mm -hmm. He just has to last for the next five to maybe 10 minutes, maybe a little bit shy of 10 minutes. Okay. The Lings run through, and I think he's going to realize, <laughs> wow, that gas is not mined out. Okay, we're 30 minutes into the game. That's kind of surprising. <laughs> but that's like a fresh 5K gas for Snow to pick up over the next next little yeah. bit. Yeah. Ed, you know, lots of games they end where somebody, you know, the push doesn't work or the buildings are almost all destroyed. It's really obvious. This may be one where the Protoss just fizzles out. Mm -hmm. Zerg doesn't really have to try to kill him. Zerg can just st stay on their side of the map, drain all the resources that they have. Um, it is worth pointing out, by the way, this position we keep looking at, that those patches have barely been mined because mm -hmm. you can kind of wedge Zealots and Dragoons there and just keep storming those spots. And it looks like the Lings will come in and maybe pick off some of these High Templars, but there are Zealots here to kind of support. Is there any world in which you might want something like D-Web here? Uh, you know, I don't think so because it just costs a lot of it gas. It costs a to get lot, the yeah. But it, I, does he it, still it, have that it, group it, of and, Corsairs? And, and, sorry. For, um, I don't see it, man. Oh, okay. I mean, look, even getting the fleet beacon, it's like so expensive and then yeah. the upgrade's so expensive. And you're fighting lurkers, so like they can just pick up and shuffle back. Mm-hmm. Now, I do like this Reaver drop here. This is pretty cool. Yeah, he's he can maybe headway. make this work here. Yeah, and just kind of open this up. Because maybe it turns out that it's actually that center left base that's going to mine up for Zerg. We're seeing that Zerg right now, he's mining from the base above this, but doesn't have much else. Yeah, that's Most of the true. Zerg's army is, is basically parked out, out on the map. Mm hmm I, so, you can't really attack move into this either. Like this hallway no. is the same width as a Psy Storm. So like this is this is Psy Storm Paradise in there. Yeah, you meet me on Psy Storm Street. <laughs> this is kind of crazy that like yeah, you just can't really engage with that. The bottleneck is so severe. He's gonna be hitting the uh, the hatchery here. So, so Zerg's gonna just take everything and try to throw it at this. Mm. Snow with great micro picks back up and shimmies away. Yeah, some uh, Lurkers and Defilers trying to come up for a flank upon that, but Snow is kind of there to catch it. Oh, he picks that up. Nicely done. Dude, is, now, is Snow taking, like, is he going to take an advantage well, here? I wish our Observer would check how many minerals are left at each of the bases. Yeah. Because we're seeing Zerg kind of lose stuff over time, but Zerg does have deeper pockets with the bases. Mm -hmm. Even with the minerals, he can't mine over at the center right spot. You know, it's so rare to have a PVZ that, would, that just mines out, but this could be one of those games. Yeah, yeah. And I tell you what, I love this pushing that he's doing. The only counter I can think of is Guardians, but, you know, I don't know if we're going to end up seeing that, unfortunately. <laughs> no one has the 300 IQ Terran... <laughs> Protoss for Zerg Brain. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> He's even going to send Lings down here. Now, Sulky's got to be a little bit careful. Uh, that top left base for Zerg should be drying up. Ooh. Oh, my gosh. The <laughs> Archon just catches that first Scourge. Just barely He's going to kill the hatchery. Mm -hmm. I almost feel like we need to have more shuttles and just start to actually elevate her down your whole army. Yeah, maybe. So we'll keep bringing in a counterattack here, and Snow will shuttle back his uh, Reavers to help out. Another great play goes down here from Sulky. You know, it, this position, I think the position is kind of valuable, but, I mean, the geyser is gone. He doesn't really have minerals left there, so it's not the end of the world to not be mining from that base. But don't forget, you do get two gas per run from these 
these geysers and that does make a difference 26 kills on one reaver 22 on the other oh man just wild okay so those are barely any resources there he's going to start to leapfrog the reavers down here now keep in mind man like it's actually really hard for lings and hydras to take on reavers yeah it's clearly a it's clearly a not a fair matchup with that so now he's just going to send everything back here so you know maybe there's a world where that the, he could trade out damage just well enough he's going to come back in and then pick up the dude it's snow reaver micro God. dude he's he so is killing good. so much look at sulky now sulky's been maxed for like 15 minutes and now he doesn't have a big bank anymore and he's no longer maxed snow is he's doing it man he's grinding him so this base, I, I don't know that Protoss can, like, get a Nexus up here. I feel like we need to see a lot more shuttles made. He needs to just suddenly drop, like, a ton of stuff there. Because he can eventually mine out these bases, and they're, they don't have any value anymore. Okay, we got three shuttles at play now. Uh, Tasteless, he Snow is actually going to run out of money. He only has, That's what like, I'm getting at. He, yeah, he, he only has, like, 600 he, minerals at that mineral base, I think. Keep in mind, Scarabs cost minerals, guys. Yeah. So if he can get, he needs to get a nexus over at that base on the center right. I think. Well, let's just wait and see. It's not easy for Zerg to attack at a size storm and reaver. No, certainly not. The cost efficiency is a little PSA there. Out of control, dude. I, this is the one time I really wish, you know, in StarCraft II, how we can just check like what the efficiency is, like units lost value type of thing. Yeah. I would love to see that this game because, like, Sulky is sucking up more resources than Snow throughout the game. And look at the supplies at this point. The Reavers themselves have killed so much. I mean, he's pushing in now. Again, he just keeps playing keep away. You can always outrun Scourge with uh, speed shuttles, guys. Mm. Oh, God, he's so good. This is the only time this I've ever insane. thought that Corruptor is better than Scourge in my whole life. <laughs> watching <laughs> watching him completely unable to kill Snow's, uh, Snow's shuttles here. Yeah, it's like a funny thing. But again, he needs a Nexus here. Look at how the minerals are just really slowing down here. Now, again, Sulky's still mining, guys. I mean, Snow's doing it, putting up a great show over here. But... Every Scarab costs a little bit. A big attack over here. He Oof. storms it. Oh, my God. Dude, Sulky is throwing everything at Snow right now. His supply only at 150. Okay. There are some minerals in the main for Protoss. I just noticed this. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Probably can't be that much. Probably but, not. You know, if he, if he can get... If he can get... A nexus there. I mean, it does seem like that's the plan. He, it seems like he wants to hold out just as much as possible. I I really don't know what's going to happen here because he's literally going to run out of minerals for scarabs relatively soon. Well, that's why he needs to get a nexus started. Yeah. I, I feel like you know we we can wait all day, and I think that Sulky kind of knows that. That's why he's sending like just a little bit in here. Mm. He's bleeding the the reavers of the scarabs. Imagine that Good is your win Lord. condition as you run them out of scarabs. Holy crap. Dude, he, he is killing he drops so the shuttle. much. Snow is still mining some minerals. He's still got some patches. Oh, my God. Sulky he might... trying to overwhelm here. He is going to be able to pick off these uh, Reavers, it looks like. Finally. Has Sulky done it? It goes to show you how much. I think Sulky wins. I think It goes so. to show you what happens if you don't have a shuttle. Okay, that's actually a lot of minerals still. <laughs> Dude, he's, Dude, he's gonna drop wild. these probes and try to mine no, and bring the minerals isn't. back. <laughs> and no reavers remain, Tasteless. I think that's, I think that we're just at the very tail end. Oh, he does have a couple reavers, but no scarabs in them at the moment. He has to think about how he spends every mineral from here. Oh, Silky has so many minerals in the center left. Yeah. Yeah, Snow can't win this. We didn't check that for a long time. The thing is, I think that Snow doesn't know how many minerals are left in the center left. Yeah, so he he's just know. like, he's just like, 
okay, I gotta, I gotta assume that that's, uh, you know, gone. And maybe that he, he, he's probably in the mindset that they're actually just fighting over the minerals that he sees. Yeah. Yeah, you, you definitely could be right about that. In fact, Sulky's mineral base still has a few patches. Like, we haven't checked it forever, but I see him on the mini-map. I know. So, you know, there's still, like, a little bit more income there for Sulky. Yeah, I, I think we're still in this game for a little bit. I mean, they're actually mining almost the same amount. I think that the Zerg just wiped out top left, by the way. Okay. There is one patch for Sulky at the top center. Well, I guess it is natural. So he's done a pretty good reset. This is once again full of uh, Dragoons, Observers, mm -hmm. Archons, Shuttles with Templars, and a Reaver. So he can he can kind of do this dance. Yeah. Keep in mind, guys, there's a lot of minerals at this base. It does seem like Sol Snow is not intent. OK, so that is going to mine out. Sulky finally yeah, it took seems that like gas, he wants too. To basically yeah, he wants to slow play it. He now you know he knows there's minerals in his main, and he's basically thinking, okay, Zerg's gonna mine out. I get way more value. He's gonna storm drop. No, oh, he's man. not. Oh what man. Is this? Oh, oh. He, he might have just <laughs> scouted with that. Yeah. Uh, I I gotta point out as well. I did notice Sulky is using a slightly different tactic. I saw him actually going after the observers of snow there for a moment. He did get one of them, but there's still mm -hmm. one sitting there. So maybe that's something in his mind as well. It's like, well, the Observer, you know, if we can hit that with a Scourge, that's a that's a, actually a pretty good kill. We're 40 seconds out. Uh, sorry, yeah, we're 30 seconds out from a 40-minute game. That's what I was trying to say. Numbers are hard, guys. <laughs> so he's going to just drain those spots of resources. Snow's at 112 supply and Sulky's at 135. So things are actually really dipping into starvation mode. Yeah. By the way, you just don't see these games PvZ. It's hard to ever get the situation. Totally. I guess we can thank the map for that. Um, and he, I, you know what I just realized? He might be able to push in to the top left. There's not really anything here, Artosis. We kind of right. stopped talking about this because there was just this endless minefield of lurkers. Mm -hmm. This could go back into like a normal game where he's just going to try to push up here. And so much has been invested in trying to just get drones to mine there. There's four Reavers here. Oh, my God. Plagues Great galore. The surround oh. of the Zerglings is insane, but the I, splash damage. Oh, my Protoss God. <laughs> okay, he's going to come in again. He's kind of doing this in waves, as you can see. Well, you now, this, the Scarabs are just so punishing when the uh, Lings are there. Oh, my God. What is this game? I what is this dude, this game? is a one in a million game. I can't believe what we're this watching right now. This is crazy. This is one of the wildest, best of sevens. We're only in game three, too. Oh, my God. You're right. And now I'm actually, I, yeah. I've been kind of like on Team Snow watching him grind Sulky down. But actually, now I want Sulky to win just to make sure we get more games between these yeah. two. I don't think we'll have another one that looks like this. But this has no, been absurd. No, I don't think we absurd. can recreate this. Yeah. It seems like he should just do one storm drop at least um, <gasps> over onto the, the place where there's no drones. Okay, he kills that shuttle. That's really bad. He could still target these drones. Woo! Very good hit. I love that Sulky is long distance mining four patches right now there. <laughs> He's just getting anything he can. Okay. This is going to mine out. The Zerg in the center left is going to mine out. There's one patch left with four minerals, so that's gone. I think we're done. Snow has what he has. But he needs he needs a shuttle. I assume it's making. He's going to actually just rush up here and try to just take this out immediately, and it does work. Scourge are going to try to come in again. He did not get the observer speed, I just realized. Oh. That's kind of a big deal. He doesn't have... Oh, okay, yeah, he does well, bring you would... up another observer. Oh, no. He, maybe he does have observer speed. Is that is that a fast observer? No, that looks no, slow. Like that looks slow. No. Okay. Maybe he has the sight range, though. I would okay. imagine he'd get that here. So, Protoss still have the mana from the Templars. That's kind of the infinite resource they have. Archons. Archons, yeah. Snow is not gaining. Oh, no, he is. He suddenly got a bunch of money. How did that happen? Maybe he canceled something? N uh, he Nine minerals. 
Not moving. Yeah, yeah, he had like 200 in bank that he sat on for a minute, but it looks like he's spent that all down now. Um, Is this the correct play to still push here? Like, maybe he should try to take that 9 o'clock again. Like, there's still a little bit of resources there, at least. No, I, I, th I, think, it's, I think it's so close to dead. Is it? I think he has to try to play this, because he, he has a positional advantage here. He can just keep storming. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like he can cover his Reavers, and we know he can't make Scarabs. It's a lot harder to make this work with just Templars here, mm -hmm. and that's all he's making right now. Well, I guess, you know, you have that now, gas bank. 78 supply to... <laughs> 78 supply... Again, I don't see a shuttle. I imagine he has to have one, or he wouldn't be trying to play this game out. Mm -hmm. Unless he thinks he can force a draw. There it is. So... I mean, he got some great storms off over here. He's doing a good job. With a shuttle back in the game, I think there's really still opportunities here. Drones are getting picked off. I'm a little surprised that he actually um, let that <gasps> Archon make. I almost feel like you want to just have more Templars you know, up your sleeve. Mm. Another big push in over here. This might be what can cost Snow the game. He's going to hit this with Storm. There's no Scarabs in that uh, Reaver. He's going to pick up the Archons. He's going to try to bring them down here. Oh, I'm sorry. He picks up the Templar and brings it down here. Mm. He does have the double Another Archon. Archon's but... also in there. Oh, man. I think that's it. I think Solky's done it. Snow down to 48 wow. supply. He has a few high Templars left. He needs, a, he needs to save the shuttle. Like, he cannot make another one. That is the last shuttle in this game for sure. How and... can you not be a fan of Snow from this game? Seriously. GG. Wow. Oh, my God. It was a 44-minute, 25-second game. That was that was crazy. Whoa. That was a crazy wow. game. What a, Dude, what a pleasure. That is insane. They are so good at the late game, man. That was that was really awesome to see. Solky just barely getting I thought he was going to win heavily for a while. Uh, do you think that would have been completely different if Snow had been mining gas bottom left earlier? Well, we would we probably wouldn't have gotten into that position. Yeah. Again, it, you know, we can look at that those final what final ten minutes, and that was some of the best StarCraft ever. But you know, he wasn't draining gas at one of his bases, and so he wasn't able to push in. Wow, I'm I'm kind of like blown away after that. You know, we have two super cheesy, crazy games, and then the ultimate late <laughs> yeah. game high grindy. Plague, Dark Swarm against Storm Scarab. Wild, wild game. We're going to go to a break, and when we come back, game four.
오늘 내 기분 각도로 말할게. 이 바퀴 내 무게가 다 담아질까? 하루만 이 의자에 몇 시간 이고 싶어. 알고 싶어 너의 커스텀 값 만들어봐 네 의자의 꿀잼 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 Ce soir, les rues sont pleines d'amour. Ce soir, le vent danse autour de nous. Ensemble sous un ciel chaud. 안녕, 여러분. 권희슬입니다. 좀 친한 친구들이랑 오늘 좀 수다 좀 떨려고 만나기로 해서요. 조금 더 부끄러워 이렇게 카메라를 켜봤습니다. 준비하고 있어? 전 머리 하고 있거든요, 지금. 귀엽게 할 예정이거든요. 귀여운 거 진짜 딱 싫어. <웃음> 혼자 꽃도 보고 갈 거야. 브이로그 열심히 찍네. <웃음> 나 성공할 거야, 딱 기다려. 여보세요? 아니, 준비 잘 하고 있어, 방. 방 통화했는데. 는 어느 정도인가 해서 전화 드렸어요. 정도요? 발레코 아, 나도야. 여기 발레코라고 요즘 유행하는 거거든요, 이렇게. 아, 저는 근데. 블랙스한 느낌이거든요. 블랙스요? 아 블랙스 아니요. 저는 화이트 좋아해요. 아 그러면은 괜찮겠네요 밸런스가. 네, 이랬습니다. 이따 봬요 발레코어 씨. 아 꽃도 예쁘고 이슬이도 예쁘고 어? 여기 꽃밖에 없네 화면에. 가볼까요? 아, 도착했습니다. 딱 만나자마자 애들 첫 마디 예상해 볼까요? 아, 뭐야? 오늘 뭔데? 과연 어떤 말을 할지 함께 보시죠. How are we? 안녕하세요. 뭐야? 습관이야, 습관이야. 안녕하세요. 야, 얘는 오늘 화이트 소환이고 난 블랙 소환 느낌이거든? 아, 저는 여기 이거 예쁘다. 네, 예쁘다. 약간 이런 아니, 느낌. 예쁘다. 나는 이거 때문에 처음 들었다. 나 오자마자 피디님한테 한 거. 어. 왜? 통통을 어떻게? 아니 여기 마시룩이라고 아, 했잖아. 아니 때문에 온다 그랬어요. 우와. 오셨다. 아니, 아 갈까요? 아 이제 꺼야겠다. 아, 인사 한번 해줘 브이로그니까 그래도. 안녕. 아, 아. 그거 들었어? 뭐? 뭐? 아니 이번에 이스포츠. 어. 음. 아, 이거 얘기해도 되나? 왜 이거 얘기 나가면 큰일 나? 너 고백받았어? <웃음> 사귀어? <웃음> 뭔데? 말해 Welcome back. Oh, man. Woo! 
We all had to get up and stretch our legs after that one. <laughs> Bathroom break, refill your water cup, grab another beer, get some more popcorn. This finals is far from over. This is uh, pretty exciting right now. I love that it's two to one. Yeah. I love that Sulky was able to pick that up. You know, he played a more standard macro-esque game and showed that he can do it even on a tight map like that where Snow is grinding like crazy. Uh, our next map, I want to say is Citadel. So, you know, just kind of a standard overall map, like a four-player map. I'm hoping that Soul Key once again goes for more of a macro game. I think he's going to have the best shot with that. I think I think Soul Key's got to stick with the, the macro games. Um, I can't stop thinking about that game. It is unfortunate that it was tainted with the fact that Snow didn't mind gas at that other base for so long. Yeah. Otherwise, that might have gone down as just like, oh, this is the perfect game. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, but we'll never know if he would be able to push into that spot or not. Sometimes you have that extra gas and you still can't get in there. You still can't crack that lurker wall. Mm -hmm. um, but look, Sulky, we said game three was so important for him. Because if he doesn't win that, it's just almost unimaginable that you are down 0-3 and then you win four games in a row, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, he did it. So now he's got to even this out two to two. He really does. He he needs to win this one, especially since we have Troy coming up in set five, and that can be a that can be a hard one against a player like Snow, I think. So here we go, set four, an important game here for Solky if he's going to have a chance to defend his title in the finals against Hero. Can't wait to see how it goes. Yep, we're getting into this match right now. Uh, I can't even imagine how exhausted both players are. It's funny because we had such short games for game one and two. I thought, okay, there's just no way. This is going to be a long evening. It could be a 4-0. And then we had that insane one. Let's keep going, guys. Game four, possibly halfway through this series after we're done with this. Let's see who takes it on to Citadel. So it's snow here in the top left. And the bottom left is Sulky. I, I, you know what? We've, I am. Um, what? Yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, I feel like we've actually seen really good Protoss for Sir games on Citadel. They definitely entertaining ones. Yeah, we have. So I was just wondering what your uh, take on the map is for this matchup. I think it's a great map for the matchup. Like, is, um, it, is it good for you know, Protoss, it, good for Zerg, or just kind of a good balance? I think it's it's fairly balanced. I mean, you can definitely take these bases at, you know, 12, 6, 3, and 9, and just sort of turtle up and, and lurker up. But that's a, a thing on many maps, right? So mm -hmm. I'm a Protoss player. I'm like, I don't like that. But, I mean, there's things <laughs> that, I, you know, Zergs don't like that I get to play on with on other maps. Um, I don't think there's any one thing that makes it clearly favored for one race. Mm -hmm. I do feel like the middle expansions are a little bit tough for um, Zergs to hold yeah. if you're going to expand there. So I feel like we don't see Zergs take that that much. But who knows? Maybe Sulky proves me wrong here. Gateway expand. Oh, that's our first gateway opener of the day for Snow. Yeah, that's right. And he'll get down here, see that so overlord, see that. and yeah, that, that means he's going to be able to very, very quickly uh, rally his zealots down. But it is a pull first from Sulky. So he's going to be able to, to try to combat this. The probe is going to have to watch how many larvae are banked up. And, um, you know, make the zealots accordingly, figure out, can I put pressure on or can I not? I always find this interesting. Uh, with the very best players in the world because they've done this dance so many times. Mm -hmm. You know, when we were casting ASL years and years ago, Bisu was still really good with this build at, you know, kind of confusing the Zerg, like pressuring with a couple Zealots, then uh, fracturing one off and sending that somewhere else and then hitting the, the, uh, the Zerg a little bit later on. Like maybe when the Zerg thought he was safe to send his lings out. Mm hmm uh, and this Zerg actually makes his natural hatchery at the bottom right natural. That's mm. wild. It's going to be a hard one to find. Wow. <laughs> That's not where I would expect yeah. a hatchery to go down. That's for sure. Yeah, well, I, you know, the thing is, 
when you say it's going to be hard to find, the Protoss just might not find it. Yeah. He's going to check the two usual spots. He's going to check up there, and then he's going to probably loop back down and just confirm that's there, and then try to check at six. But when he doesn't see it there, the Zerg is going to be a little bit confused. Mm. You, I mean, now, making a, one of your three hatcheries at the natural of another starting location is not crazy. It's not unheard of. It's not mm -hmm. weird. Making your second hatchery there, though, is. So that's kind of yeah. cool to see. Yeah. Uh, I actually like that he's taking that location, though, as well. If you kind of remember back to a few years ago, uh, Larva and Solki were the two players that would do that pretty often against Protoss and then go into a big four-game, four-base, like, hive type of play. Uh, and I always did feel that Solki is one of the top two with Larva with that style. And we haven't seen that style really utilized in recent years. But after seeing the game that we just saw from Solki, I, I kind of like this idea to set up you know, himself in a position where he can have two really heavily turtled places in four bases. You know, it's a tricky style to play against. It's something I personally have had a hard time dealing with, is the Zergs that just take two naturals and just kind of camp it out. Um, it does seem like there's ways for Protoss to deal with it if you go into Reaver really fast. Mm. You can also take hatcheries in this formation. Oh, he beat me to it. And you don't have to play a turtle game. <laughs> in this case, he's going to go for a three hatch Hydra bust. Well, there's uh, no forge that I've seen as of yet. We'll see if he's trying to play a super greedy game or not. There oh, are quite was, a few zealots on the map. Was, was that not a forge there? Oh, it's a core. You're right. Yeah. So you can still hold this if the core is out there. And in some ways, it can almost be like a little bit safer as long as you get your tech up anyways. Mm -hmm. uh, but you got to be careful because this could be one of these games where, you know, we just had such a long, drawn-out, dramatic game. This one could be cut really short. Well, he does have a forge almost in, feel his, like... in his main, so hopefully he gets those cannons up yeah. in time. Yeah, but even then, you know, it, it can be tough. Mm -hmm. Now, we did see Snow survive an even more aggressive two-hatch Hydra instead of three-hatch Hydra build. But that cannon is not exactly in a great spot, Artosis. No, not so much. But he does he has a lot of zealots it's... in there, so you know, maybe that can buy him a little bit of time as well. He does have the, the Stargate on the way, so hopefully he can get a Corsair to scout out these hydras as they're moving across. Second gas started. He's really teching up. The speedlings, you know, it's never clear. That the hydras are coming behind it, but it does make it impossible to check with probes. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing to remember, when you go for a really fast starport, and you can do that because your cybernetics core is made before the forge, the Corsair comes out a little bit quicker, mm -hmm. which means you can try to check this a little bit faster. But it can mean that you have a few less cannons, and you know that Sulky knows the timings of all this perfectly anyways. He does make a second cannon in a really good spot. Mm. That's a spot the hydras can't just get on and pounce. Well, the Hydras are getting ready. They're starting to rally out into the center. I think he's going to wait for a he's little bit of a critical mass. Own. Yeah. It, he's it, trying to see if there are Hydras out here. And and what Sulky's doing is he's hiding them. He's pocketing them over on the side. And the, sten the sense here from uh, Snow is so good. He's going to check the perimeter because if the Hydras are making a beeline, he'd see it. The problem is mm. he tucked the Hydras away to the side. <laughs> Still doesn't see him. That is high ground, so Snow does not have vision. Now he knows what's going on. Pulls those zealots back. More cannons getting started. Does Sulky have enough to break through here, though? He's making more cannons. There's going to be five in total. The zealots are still on the outside. The Corsair is going to come here and try to hit that Overlord. Probes coming out to fight. The zealots actually doing a great job of tanking a little bit here. Two more cannons are warping, and he brings the uh, Corsair back here as well. Tries to put some damage onto that Overlord. Can't do that right now, though. He's got two pylons, so it's not like that pylon on the outside can be picked off and he won't have power. He tries to dive in on that one cannon in the middle. He does get it. There's already, already going to be two cannons you know, holding the line down over here. This one at the bottom is a little bit exposed, but I don't see a lot of Hydralisks here either. Mm. And it looks like Sulky's going to try to tech out of this. He's not all in. Yeah, he's taking that bottom right main base now. So, I mean, that, obviously you can just macro out of that for a bit. You don't necessarily have to make a bunch of drones to go with it. But generally, after a push like this, right, the gateways have to be delayed a little bit. 
you know, you had to make all of those those cannons that cost as much as a gateway, so you are able to drone up a little bit here as Sulky. So six gateways. Zealot charge or zealot speed, excuse me, being upgraded. And you know, I, the game goes on. Snow didn't overextend. We've seen games where the Protoss has to make like nine or even like 11 cannons trying to defend <laughs> this. That didn't happen. He's staying back. He's He, he, he didn't over cannon. Sulky didn't, um, you know, all in so hard. Things start to normalize. And isn't that funny? You see the Cybernetics Core making? Mm -hmm. You got to start back with that tech, man. <laughs> <laughs> Snow, by the way, at almost a thousand gas. So he's going to have a lot of Templars out really fast. Mm -hmm. He won't have as many storms right away. But he's going to get right back to where he needs to be. Now, the Corsairs have kind of scouted everything going on. He sees the hatcheries being added. He sees that bottom right starting to get some drones into it as well. Uh, is he forced to attack? Or is there a world where he can actually just, like, go for expansions himself? Um, I think he's, he, no matter what, he has to get a certain amount of muscle on the map and see what he can do. Oh, hold on a second. Art Artosis, is there no? Okay, there is a Templar Archives. Mm. He actually got the Robo first. Ah. Which is interesting. Well, it is snow that we're dealing with here. Maybe he feels like he needs shuttles to attack the bottom right main base, right? Like, well, you know the fronts are going to be turtled heavy. Them, yeah, I mean, when, when you see them camp up like this, I think a, a Robo Bay pretty fast is fine. He's actually getting two Robo oh, Bays. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, this is, yeah. This is really interesting. I don't think it's a mistake either. But let's find out. Is there a spire here? Oh, there is. That's got to be a spire, right? Mm -hmm. What he just flew by? Yeah, I think so. Double robo, man. Templar Archives, double robo. If you're going double robo, it's definitely Reaver Speed Shuttle, right? It couldn't be anything else, really. Well, I think you have to get a Reaver no matter what. Yeah. Maybe he wants to get more than one shuttle and try to drop in the main. I don't think I've ever seen double robo versus Zerg in a game like this. I've seen yeah. quick robo when they do this layout of hatcheries because sometimes speed lots, maybe like one Archon and then two Reavers can push in with an mm -hmm. Observer and you just get Storm a lot later. But double Robo, oh my God, it's so much gas. It is. I guess he did have a thousand gas. He did get, okay, so he is making the Archon, so he is gonna go for then two Reavers behind this, I guess. So it's it's like a Zealot Archon Dragoon Reaver, Reaver push? push. And so is this just to break uh, the really turtled position? And that's that's like what it does. It's not like yeah. harassment based, but instead just going for it. I I think you just go for the Reavers. Mm. Now, you got to be careful because the Mutas can be a little bit scary if, if they go for that. But, you know, when you see Corsairs dropping like that, it can be pretty tempting to switch into this. I think especially if you knew he had two Robos, you'd be thinking about that even more. But with Archons yeah. and Dragoons out, I could see him kind of forcing those back, right? There's no High Templars to snipe. It's more like, I guess you'd be jumping on the Reavers at that point. Oh my god, I, I've never quite seen this. I'm so intrigued. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have Observers, right? Uh, No, I guess he doesn't yet. And there are some, uh, some Lurkers out, but of course he can get some Observers pretty quickly there with the Double Robo. Yeah, sure. And there's one. He's not showing the Reavers yet either. Mm -hmm. He's kind of hanging back. The Corsairs are back up. Gosh, I do feel like you could maybe go for uh, Mutas and try to snipe this. But then again, I guess a shuttle's not that easy to kill, right? I'm so used to seeing Templars get sniped, but mm -hmm. it, it is a different situation. Well, and he sees Dragoon Archon, right? So if I see that, I'm like, oh my god, he is going for the Mutas. Okay, so... Yeah. This all comes down to sniping Reavers, right? Or the shuttle, at least. Yes. Oh, he needs to be careful. Every bit of shields on that is so valuable. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't like this. Uh-oh. Yeah, he gets the shuttle he already. He... Yeah, he's doing a good job blowing up these um, sunks. He's losing a lot of zealots. Oof. I, I... Sorry, where is the Observer? I can't see it. Oh, it's way up there. And I think he, oh, that Sulky man. wins this game. Yeah, for sure it looks that way. The the Reavers actually walked into range of those sunken. Sometimes it's really hard to attack to the south with Reavers, as funny as that is. 
Uh, but yeah, he he loses the push. There's no coming back from here. Sulky, this is Sulky's no. game. Yeah, really interesting to see the double robo. Again, I don't I don't think I've ever seen that. Yeah. There might be a I, reason I kinda for it. I kind of get it. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, he did get two reavers out really fast. But um yeah, there's it's going to be hard to have a follow up from here. I think literally now you can just mass hydra and win. Yeah. You don't have Sky Storm. And yes, you've got a reaver, but like you actually almost you there's a reason why you don't see Reavers first and Templars second in any kind of normal game. Reavers are kind of the last thing you get to have. I don't know, Tasis. I was watching you lose the three hatch Hydra the other day, and I, I thought Reavers would have been a better choice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you and everybody in my Twitch chat. Uh, is he going to just kill this Reaver? Yeah. Mm. There's no one's safe. No one's safe for those Mutas. The rest of this game should be very easy for Sulky. He just wipes out that third base. Protoss is going to mine out so fast on these two bases. He really doesn't have much. Like, even if you combo up the Psy Storms with the Reavers, if he had a third gas here, I'd, I'd give him some sort of shot. But in this situation, it looks pretty impossible. Sulky would really have to throw. Yeah, the Reavers are going to jump in. The Hydra's going to jump in onto the Reavers. And look, I, you know, the Hydra never is thin out. I think he could probably topple those two uh, Lurkers, but he decides to back up. This is really, at this point in time, a game of Snow just trying to get one more base up before he dries up on resources. <laughs> and I got to say, look, his micro is looking pretty good. I mean, Snow did kind of do the impossible and not mine a gas in game three and still hang with <laughs> the ASL champion of the last season and almost make the ASL champion mine out. Well, I, I so hope that push he can, once more. I hope he can make something happen here. That would be really, really exciting. You, we know how cost efficient he can play. And you know, you add Reavers in and his speed shuttles with the type of micro he has with some Psy Storms. I guess if he flattens this army and gets a base up, that it, maybe maybe the game continues forward and we can maybe get a snow comeback. Well, he's got Templars now. So everything changes. He's got Templars, and I think he probably has enough that he can actually fight this. Yeah, it does look and, that way. You know, maybe this is actually fine. The game is going to go on. I would like to see Snow take a third base. He is going to send that probe out there. He might even just try to push. Templars and Reavers, you basically have an army that you're supposed to have on like four bases, but he somehow is on it on two right now. So, you know, Zerg has to really respect this and back off. I don't see Mutas out again, by the way. The Mutas are kind of mm. what we're letting the, um, leading the charge here. Again, yeah. just Archon, Lurker, they lose to this composition. There's not a ton of Dragoons here, so if he could snipe that again, it would be really big. Well, getting some big Scarabs here. Uh, some Scourge coming over, trying to push that shuttle back, but he does, he's so quick at microing it over the Dragoons and over the, uh, over the Archons there. So the third base going up for Snow at nine. A uh, Hydra, is this going to be a counterattack or is he getting ready for a flank? I think he wanted to do a counterattack, but now it's almost too late because he's just going to start to move in here. He's going to just go for it, man. He's going to get those uh, Scarab shots out. He wipes the Lurkers out. Hold up a second. The the Hydras are going to come back their way out of position. Artosis, he could actually win this. Yeah. This is wild. This is, this is Snow Reavers here too. But... The Hydras are so far out. He is bringing them all back, right? So there's a little bit of flanking going on. The storm really, really good. These Reavers getting some amazing scarabs as well. Oh my God, Sulky threw the meat grinder. What? Yeah, well, I mean, when you have storm and Reavers and you got Dragoons and everything else in between, he's still microing this so well. Dude, the Zealots are just killing everything. Dude, I, what, what? Oh my God. Dude, he I think failed he might have actually a, killed him. He failed a two base, two robo reaver push against four base Sulky, and then was like, it's fine, and then made the same exact army again, went again, and won. What am I looking at? This is insane to me. That hatchery is gonna go down, by the way. He's just kind of taking his time. He's gonna bust that lurker egg. I guess that was a really damaged Hydra, so now he can get access into the main. There's still enough zealots out here. He could drive the Hydras back, at least for the time being. He needs to run into the main. He's got DTs. <laughs> He's got DTs. 
Slipping the DT in there would be pretty sick. The storm's coming out here, but he is... He's a little bit fractured on his army still. Does Solky actually maybe still have a shot here? Snow, like, well, snow I, supply is I really low. I think he can low. hold it. He needs to actually protect the space, and maybe he overextended there. Mm. Why are these guys having the greatest games of all time? I don't now, know. Now, because there's <laughs> mutas out, I, I really feel like he should have uh, maybe played a little bit. Yeah, that's going to be it. Oh, my God. Look at... Sulky cocking his head to the side like, wow. Jesus. Wow. What? Snow a, is so scary. Yeah. What a crazy game. Seriously. Like, Sulky's wins are definitely games that, uh, you know, it, it might not go the right way for him every time. Very, very tight margins. And I tell you, the fact when Snow lost that first push, I'm like, there's no way. I've seen so many StarCraft games, there's no way you come back from this. And the fact that he, like, made it into a game like that. Oh my God, he's just so strong. It's crazy. And look, I think that if Snow had just ran back after killing the hatch and regrouped and yeah. protected his third, I think the game goes on. I think you're I right. I think it was, you know, and I, I think he was probably as surprised as everybody else when there was just a bunch of sunken colonies in the main. <laughs> uh, but that goes to show you how strong the soul he is. He's like, no, I am not losing my main here. You can have my third, and I'm going to buy time and make it look like I'm going to try to save it, but I already know I'm going to lose my other base. So this is the moment. Look at the lurker shots. He gets perfect shots on the Hydras, clears that out. Uh, the shots connect perfectly onto the lurkers, and the Hydras were basically ready to do a counterattack, and he realized he has to actually come back here. Mm. Whenever you have an army laid out like this with Templars, it's so easy to just storm this and let the Reavers do, the, uh, do their thing. Mm-hmm. Just kind of finishes off anything. It's like an alley-oop or something here with the amount of splash damage going out onto those Hydras. This part was was unreal, the amount of units that Sulky was, was hemorrhaging. If Snow had, like, there's so many things, I think, that could have changed just slightly and had Snow win this game. Look at these Templars still spinning in circles this whole time. <laughs> they, like, never become an Archon. It's insane. Yeah, dude, they're just dancing. All right. I know. So... Yeah, we're we're two to two. Uh, That's game four. Yeah. Wow. Like, like, so what is there? One more game left? No. <laughs> At least two. We got more. a ways to go. Yeah. My God. And uh, I believe Troy is our next map, and Troy could be another crazy one. Uh, don't forget there are islands here, and you can make everything into islands. So. You know, it, some of these Reaver builds, maybe we see them again. I would love to just explore more Reavers in this matchup. Like, Snow is really showing us that he can kind of port his his other styles over, his strengths over into a matchup where we don't necessarily see early Reavers that effective. I can't believe how good these games are tonight. Every game is so different from the other game. It's just, it's wild, man. I don't think we're going to go to break. Um, usually they do at least string two games together. Mm -hmm. We'll see what the producers decide. I think they had an arbitrary break after the last game just because it was so long. Yeah, I, I wouldn't mind to just jump what in. A, what a night. I don't, I don't want to wait, man. I want to see another crazy game between these two. And I want to see if... Same. Uh, hey, all right. Thank you. Thanks, Snow and Taste mm -hmm. Appreciate you. Uh, what, what oh, I really my God. It's like a flash and the sign change. <laughs> ASL Season 17, wife Tosis better than Artosis. Oh, I my agree. God. Are you kidding me? <laughs> well, you would know. Um, well, I think we are ready, Tasis. I think you're right. We're going to go into this next game, it looks like. Yeah, I think we're going to go on to it. It's going to be on the map. Troy, the same name as the guy that used to beat up Artosis in high school. <laughs> I don't yeah, know if that's now, true or not, but it and does now, sound now like a he, bully from our childhood. Now he beats me up on the ladder, man. It's really sad. <laughs> now, now he plays Protoss and makes DTs <laughs> and beats you up on the ladder. All right, guys, we're going to go into this next map. It's tied up 2-2. Two to two. Let's see who takes this lead. Okay, uh, Snow in the bottom right, and Sulky in the bottom left. What is the over-under on two-gate here, Tasteless? 
Artosis, for the number of times you've said it's going to happen, I feel like it's not going to happen ever <laughs> on this map. Let's see. Let's Look, see I'm just if waiting he does to see. Yeah, I'm waiting to see which which Protoss players are smart enough to just it's make two so gateways. It's crazy. <laughs> It's like every game you just put yourself out on a limb yeah. and look bad by saying they're going to two gate and it doesn't happen. You just keep doing it. I will never Let's stop. I will never, yeah. ever stop, Tasis. Two gate is the way. Two gate has won every single game that we've seen it on this map. I, I have to we've say We've never it. seen it on this map. What are you talking about? Yeah, we did. Bisu beat light with it. Who did it? Bisu beat light with it. Did he two gate? Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm thinking PVZ, though. Would you, would you two gate on this map? Yeah, do you two gate here at PVZ as well? All matchups tasteless. I told you tasteless. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you guys, if you, if you don't know the map, you destroy those assimilators that are neutral and you turn their main into an island. Well, that is. Uh... But I think this game, he's going to go for Nexus first. Oh, hold on. 12 gate, 12 gate, tasteless. You wait. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I told you. It just, it's a matter of how you get there. Yeah. Forge. Okay, so he wants to opt for a cannon rush if pool is skipped. Mm -hmm. And pool is, is it skipped? The map's yeah. not covering it up, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah I don't yeah. think you can fit a pool down there anyways. Mm -hmm. I think this is going to be a cannon rush then. Yeah, it this might be. This is why be. you go early forge. Is it, it leaves you this option. Obviously, you can do a great fast expand build with it. Now he's is gonna dash into the main base there. I guess he can check the pool timing. Uh, yeah. I mean, what what time do you have to start the pylon by to make this work? Uh, really soon. But I guess he's not gonna do it. Oh. Wow. Okay. So two probes scouting on the map. I don't know if you can counter rush behind the minerals uh, on this or not. But usually, if you have two probes there and the other one hasn't turned around immediately, you send that one in there to do the counter rush. But I guess he sees this, and, you know, frankly, I don't know when exactly Sulky pulled. I know it wasn't before the hatchery, but I didn't look if it was, like, a, you know, a, a hatch on nine, pool on nine, or something like that. Mm. No, it was, it was like, a just... 11 hatch, I think, into pool. Okay. Well, maybe he can't fit it back there. Mm -hmm. So he's just going to expand. This is totally fine. This is also a completely okay way to do this. You don't have to cannon rush. He gets the gateway before the cannon. Mm-hmm. So he has a Nexus, a Gateway. He might even start his gas, depending on how safe he thinks he is. Well, he's still got his uh, probe running around, getting some scouting done. And Solky, once again, has gone for the two hatch gas. He's getting a very, very fast layer here. And, of course, Snow sees it. I like the block. I guess you yeah. can just keep one Ling from coming in there. Um so if you're going to do this, you know, we were talking about the gas geysers and zealots killing them. I guess mutilus could also do that, too. This also just could be a, a good idea to try this out on this map. It seems like if Sulky's going to go for a quick gas opening again, he seems to have a couple different options. In game one, it was what looked like muta tech, but it was also a ling drop behind that. Mm -hmm. Game two, it was a super fast hydra bust. And in game three, it's layer tech with hydra den. So possibly oh. a lurker drop or maybe a bust. You know, we, we've been in a habit of saying that you can't do busts on natural expansions where they're on the high ground and you're on the low ground because mm -hmm. a chance to miss. Mm -hmm. And we've seen a shocking number of successes in all the matchups where people do it, I think because good players under def uh, under defend. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think you're right about that. And one thing to mention is that the lurker shots can't miss because they're pure splash damage. Uh, right. Right. Yeah, so like it, basically every section of the lurker spine is splash damage, and um, so like you're not going to miss any shots with that type of bust. Normally, it's like how many lurkers do you go with that? Is it three lurkers and mass speedling is the normal for the front front door two hatch lurker bust? Um, I feel like three sounds right. I think I mean we're going to see in a second here. It mm. could be more. I think it's going to be I that. Think it just depends. I don't think he can There's do a also drop or anything. Where no, well, I was going to say that, you know, there's tricks where you do a drop later or you mm -hmm. do a, like, lurker drop like, with just two lurkers really early on and try to run in there. And this might just work. Look at how the cannons are kind of lining up. Oh, is that double Stargate? Did I see that correctly? Oh. Yes. Oh, this is really bad. Yeah, well, those are it's definitely really not going to be very helpful here. 
Yeah, with the double no. cannons where they're at, like if you run up, burrow those lurkers real quick, you're gonna also like burst down the zealot really quickly, allow those zerglings to get in. If you kill the cannons, it's basically game over, right? Yeah, well, and yeah, you can just chain the damage together. Mm -hmm. You're gonna kill the zealot, dra the dragoon, and the cannons, and probably just win the game. And it's funny too, because when I saw gas tech, I thought mutas too, but this makes way more sense as I'm seeing the game develop. A third cannon started, but this is not going to be done by the time the lurkers are there. I think. Yeah, the lurkers are almost. And even done if right it now. is, it might be bad. In fact, I think they he... just finished. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Now, if this doesn't work, Sulky's going to be in a lot of trouble. But this is looking pretty scary. He takes out one lurker. Oh man, when the probes have to come up to defend against the lurkers, that is a tough one. He's trying to target down the lurkers with those cannons, and he does get he does. them, but there are a lot of lings up here. I think he just now loses. I don't think there's a way that he recovers from this. This is going to be Sulky's third win in a row. Losing the natural is basically like losing the game here. Mm -hmm. These cannons are also on the outside. There's not an angle to probe drill to deal with this. You could also just make lurkers again and hit the nexus from a weird angle. Can, can I can I say something stupid, tasteless? If he holds this, yes. Wait, yeah, I think he he might not hold this at all right now. The probe's yeah. trying to get in front. Oh, I'm not gonna have my opportunity for my stupid idea. Oh, it's uh, okay. Well, the stupid thing you said was that he would hold this, Arturo. You still got it out there, man. <laughs> <laughs> I still did it. I I didn't mean it, but yeah. I, I did, yeah, I still got it. Yeah, Robo was on the way. Uh, GG. It looks like he was getting ready to try to play from that position, but just too many links from Solky. I, that was not a cheese I expected to see today, but it's cool to see it. Yeah. I, I feel like we haven't seen the three lurker speedling bust in years in ASL. It's a good build. It's a good, you know, when you hold it, and he had the right idea, you target the lurkers, because once the lurkers are gone, you can sort of just block with the probes. Yeah. The issue is, I think, that the. He made that cannon, the second one, not the first, in a position that would be good versus Hydras. It's bad versus Lurkers. Yeah, yeah. It does seem like a lot of times the positions you want to have uh, cannons in versus Hydras are actually, incidentally, bad versus Lurkers because you want to have them in a certain distance away, mm -hmm. especially if you have them where they're together, where the Lurker spines will go through one and then hit the one behind it. That's kind of one of the beautiful things about StarCraft. Like, whatever you're defending, all your positionings are completely different, right? Ling, right. Lurker, Hydra, and Muta all require different position cannons. And the same can be said, really, in any matchup. Like, you just want all your stuff in different spots based on what you're fighting. But uh, there, right. Sulky's bust doing a great job picking up that victory. Dude, yeah, that three in a row, right? So, like, Sulky is doing this kind of reverse sweep action again. That's right. He just needs one more. But Snow only needs two more. This is still very doable for Snow. He started the evening off with it. He just has to end the evening with it. And look, you know, Protoss is going to die to one of those busts, right? It had to happen. Uh, I doubt Sulky will use that again. Yeah. Although he is doing a lot of two-hatch mm -hmm. quick gas builds. I don't know if he's got any more planned out here. We'll be right back. <laughs> The
그거 들었어. 뭐? 뭐? 아니 이번에 어. e스포츠 음. 거기서 음. 아 이거 이게 되나? 왜 음. 이건 얘기 나가면 큰일 나? 너 고백 받았어? 뭐야? <웃음> 사겨? <웃음> 뭔데? 말이 돼? We're back. This semifinals just keeps on going, man. <laughs> and honestly, I don't think anybody knows who's going to take it. Sulky's definitely gotten back into gear. But look, the game before this, Snow almost won. Okay? Snow almost won on the map where he wasn't mining gas, and the game went to 45 minutes. Sulky did yeah. win with that kind of rug pull opener, which punishes the very positioning that Snow has. But... Can that be recreated? And again, let's not forget that uh, Snow has had some insane moments of early game holds, showing a willingness to really kind of put the mini cap on and do that crazy obtuse cannon rush. I mean, there's so many different ways this could go. We're going to go to Radeon now here for game six. And if we do get that game of seven, it's going to be on Apocalypse. Woo! I hope that we get there. It has been a fantastic series so far, but it is now match point for Solky. Let's get into game number six. Okay, top right Snow, bottom right Sulky. We're gonna do one final plug, guys. We always do two, and whenever we have these best of sevens, these long days. Um, consider supporting us on Patreon, guys. We love you. This has been so fun. What an amazing semifinals this has been. You know the finals is gonna be just as crazy. We need your support. We appreciate your support. Uh, thank you guys so much. Yeah, you guys have been fantastic, and. I tell you, it's it's series like these that really make the ASL specials. Uh, you yeah. know, this has been so close, such a wild variety of games. I love the the heavy reaver usage that we're seeing, and I sometimes I wonder. Sometimes something like this, 
will spur like big metagame changes. You never know. What if what if Snow f has figured something out where it's like, yeah, he, he you know against Zerg now you can go r two, uh, you know two Robo Reaver in the mid game because you have Archons and Dragoons to hold off the Mutas or something like that. Like, how wild would that be, Tastes, if you have to relearn the matchup like that? Could happen. It just takes a couple of weird uh, games in an ASL, because everybody who's laddering is watching this, and everybody who isn't laddering but like StarCraft is watching this. So mm -hmm. these games have insane impacts on how everybody behaves online. Yeah. This is going to be a gateway expand, by the way. Um. So Snow going to go with a very standard opening. It is true that he basically did what we were saying he would do, which is pretty much always do some variation of Fast Expand, whether it was Forge, Gateway, or even Nexus First, which he did, I think, on Game 2. Mm -hmm. Can't remember uh, yeah. for sure. Uh, but he didn't do any kind of weird proxy gate. He didn't do any kind of one base play. I know we see many do the one base, uh, two gate play. We've seen one uh, base, one gate into tech play. He's just going to stick with safe openers that can set him up nicely here. Mm -hmm. And surprisingly, Sulky's done a lot of rushes, which should really tell you what he thinks about Snow's uh, mid-game into late-game. He thinks Snow's pushes are pretty scary. They're pretty good. He would prefer to have a couple games where he just cuts them, uh, cuts them off before the game can really pick up. I am hoping, oh, wow, and it's six links. Oh, yeah. It's six links, Artosis. So this is actually really scary. Um, Sixlings means that Protoss is suddenly defending and cannot be aggressive with this mm -hmm. and has to handle the next, you know, minute or two here really carefully because you want to get your ramp blocked. You have to keep the gateway alive. You can't lose the pylon. Um, so we got to watch every step really closely here. Yeah, this is all. It's going to be a uh, micro back and forth here, trying to keep those lings off of the gateway as much as possible. He does have a couple of uh, probes on the ramp to block run bys. That'll at least slow them and maybe allow him to get a zealot up to help. Because you do not want these zerglings getting in your main. He needs that next zealot to come out. That's what's most important right now. We have the three hatches planted over here. It's in a similar position to what we had in the last game, or uh, the game before the last game. Excuse me. Now. The gateway is going to run out of shields here. It's for It can be easy to forget that the gateway, you know, it's got so much HP you can kind of, you know, uh, not notice that suddenly it's close to dying here. But I think Snow has basically done this perfectly. He's not really lost any uh, actual health of the gate. Mm -hmm. The three zealots are there. The links can't really be a threat anymore. We see a gas is thrown down before a forge. Yeah, and, and no Forge, no Cybernetic Score as of yet. Let's see if he's going to go ahead and throw that down now. A couple of Zealots going across the map. It is going to be a Forge this time. Not going for anything too crazy greedy. And the Cybernetic Score shortly yeah. thereafter in the main. Yeah, so he did get gas before Forge. Just, you know, kind of showing us that he's pretty confident. Okay, the probes are going to run through here. And now that there's Ling's in the main, I mean, this is a little bit of a problem. I think Ling's speed's probably going to finish. There's a mm. setup for Zerg where you can uh, try to draw the attention of the Protoss away by running around in his main. And then you say, take those Ling's in the main, you run back in, hit their cannon. Yeah. And send your Ling's that are on the outside in. It's a very common way to die. So Sulky has set up a tactical position that could be really hard to deal with. And we still don't even have a cannon started yet. And he's actually making a lot of Zerglings right now as well. He did take another hatchery in that bottom left area. Just pure Lings coming out of his hatcheries, though. It really looks like he's going to try that bust you were talking about. And no cannon started? Uh-oh, Tasteless. I think he's being too greedy. Yeah, this is a little scary. Here's what I was talking about. Oh, God. He can hit that cannon, and it can't be protected by the Zealots. And now the gateway that was losing shields earlier, that's going to fall. This game might just end. It kind of looks like it right now. He does start a cannon, which will be flanked once again. The Zergling's getting on top of everything. If only he had a cannon before this happened. But this one time, getting a bit greedy, and it does look like Solky is going to be hitting his second finals in a row. Oh, my God. I think he just barely has enough. He needs to get another gateway down here to block this. He makes the gateway. The cannon could finish, but... Oh, he's going to loop back around. The probes are going to be pulled. 
He's got to try to stay alive. Oh, he's taking so much damage throughout this. Gets on top of that cannon as well. Morlings are about to come in, and with these, I don't know if Snow is going to even try to stay in this game. The probe's trying oh, to fight them it. off. Yeah, nothing left here for Snow. This game's over. This is it. It's going to be a ZVZ Finals. Sulky moving on to go up and face off against Hero. Wow. Wow. Well, we're definitely going to have a very deserving champion this season. Uh, you know, obviously, Snow is someone we've been looking at to possibly win an ASL. Going to fall short this time, unfortunately. I think he put out, like, a great series here. And he was he was close, man. You know, like, he almost had a couple of those games. But Sulky, just a bit too strong. This man really knows how to win a series. He's so smart. I think Snow, you know, he got a little bit too ambitious. He got far enough ahead by holding that initial attack. And then I think he, you know, I think you got to get that forge out first. Oh, misses the high five. Damn, take that. <laughs> well, he's got to do his tennis signature here on the camera. And then, of course, we'll jump yeah, over he, to he, an interview. He, you can't let those links in your main. You just can't do it. That setup is too dangerous. Oh, and he saves it with a high five at the end. Thank <laughs> God. That was cringe. <laughs> uh, everything Sulky does is planned, Tasteless. He wants people to feel a little cringe while watching him. It makes him more powerful. <laughs> um, so this is where the Lings have run by. I think even on lower ranks, people experience this maneuver. But... You know, he started the Stargate, I believe, before the cannon happened, mm -hmm. which is kind of a mini move, right? We were talking about how the conservative behavior from Snow is what let him win game one and two. And here he could have won game three, but he was cutting maybe too many corners. Yeah. If you have your cannon up and your walls all set up and there are not lings running inside your base, you will win this. Yeah, absolutely. Sulky, you know, playing a very smart game, getting those lings in there. He put a lot of money into Zerglings throughout the, the early game, and uh, he made it pay off here. You really got to watch out for him, man. He's just, he's such a smart player. He's got, uh, the fact that he's winning these giant macro games where the map gets mined out, but also winning with rushes, this is why we have thought of him as one of the best Zergs in the world for years and years and years. We're going to go to that interview now, see how he's feeling. He is going on to his second finals after winning the previous season of ASL. This time it's a ZVZ versus Hero. Sulky, as the reigning champion, you've made this a back-to-back -back finals showdown. Let's hear how you feel winning today and advancing to the grand final stage. This season, I didn't even have any expectations going into the groups in the first place. My form has dropped a bit. I decided to play with a relaxed mindset, but as I kept winning game after game, I started getting greedy. And any time that happens, I would start preparing rigorously. With this achievement, with these good results, I can be happy. To be fair, today's match was not easy. You lost the first two maps, but then in game three, things started turning in the favor of your victory. You always have a difficult time getting off to a good start, but once you get past those hardships of the early half, the atmosphere changes. It was the same in the game against Mini, it was the same here against Snow. What is your driving force? What gives you the power to get stronger like this? Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? I prepared with the intent of winning one of the first two games, that would be okay. But I got flustered once I was down 0-2. I first thought whether I should just stick to what I had prepared today. And that's what I did. It went well. My form wasn't bad, so I figured that if I can win, if I can take set number three, I can still win today. Being down two games, before you actually managed to get a win in game number three, you both were basically out of resources. What was it like then? The Reavers really got under my skin. It wasn't something I had to face in practice, so I was quite flustered. I thought, I might be losing. But it turned out he had lost a lot of resources, and I managed to win with my bank, my, my own resources. It was so bizarre. So your opponent in the Grand Final will be a Zerg. We are waiting for the ZVZ, a very demanding opponent that is Hero. So, the grand final opponent, the grand final matchup, what are your thoughts? For starters, I am guessing we were hoping to avoid a ZVZ in the finals, and so did I. 
But since it's already happening anyway, it would be great if we could have some interesting games. In any case, it seems that any time I play, the games do turn out interesting. I have a feeling this CVZ might also be entertaining. I hope you guys root for me. A lot of fans did today. And so following Zero, we have another Zerg contending for two back-to-back -back championship runs. I would like to hear your resolutions. Uh, knowing that is the case. However you look at it, this is a very precious opportunity, being able to contend for back-to-back -back championships. All I can think of now is I should grasp this opportunity. I will have to prepare well. I am confident. Many fans took the time uh, out of out of their busy schedules to come to the studio today to lend you their support. Any words of, of gratitude for anyone? Big thanks to everyone who showed up to cheer me on. We have a lot of members of the Bangchi Club joining us. Um, I now have something to thank Gamst for. He has a, he's a very busy man. Thank you for rooting for me. As well as Sangho, he's a streamer. Um, thanks to the various members of the Bangchi Club. Thank you for coming to support me and for helping me practice. Uh, Protoss players Mini, Best, Stalk, Bisu, Shuttle, YSC. Thank you guys. And lastly, Calm helped help me with the builds, especially for, uh, with Game 5 on Troy. I was ready to give up on it, but he gave me this build. To be frank, I was doubtful whether it would work, but since I had nothing better myself, I decided to try. It worked and it seems I'm advancing thanks to Calm. I hope you can help me with the finals as well. I will prepare well for the finals and do my best to win. Once again, congratulations and we'll see you in the finals. Thank you! And that does it for our chat with the two-time back-to-back finalists. We got finalist. ourselves a Salty. finals! Yeah! And it's been forever. It's been forever since we had a ZVZ finals. This is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, has uh, has been some time. And this is, it's going to be a very different one than the last one we had, right? Like Queen and Soma both kind of known for being more aggressive players, more, more maybe even suited to Zerg vs. Zerg. But now we have, like, the two gods of Macro Zerg that are going to be going at it. Dude, I'm just hoping that we get some cool builds in the CBC Finals. I would love, love, love to see, like, any sort of, you know, game where it goes to anything that isn't Mutaling. You know? Even anything else. Like, well, even a queen. Get I think we're gonna have we're gonna have some mutiling games for sure, but I think, you know, a best of seven finals, there's gonna be a lot of really tricky, brainy strats we can see here. Mm -hmm. These guys have shown a really big range. I mean, Hero was teaching us that weird, like, seven pools, seven gas, ultra-fast Ling speed build from the past. We've yeah. seen these guys mess around with hidden hatcheries. I think there's a lot of potential here. I do enjoy a good ZVZ, and you cannot get a better ZVZ than with these two players. Mm -hmm. I uh, I think it's going to be fun. It, it might end up being a, a faster finals than normal, right? Because ZVZ is... Uh, just kind of the the shortest matchup, but people been improving a lot at it as well Remember we had like a lot of surprising ZVZs lately and I'm not talking about the hive ones But even some of these ones where like for instance we had I think it was Queen mining from up the ramp to the gas that is natural Right. We were yeah. seeing some really interesting plays like that as well ZVZ has gone through some really interesting changes. I think it's in a more interesting place than it's ever been before mm -hmm. Um. This is going to be at the Vita 500 Coliseum. Is that the one in uh, Digital Media City? Yeah, I believe that that is the name of that now. So, okay, there you go. Uh, that's that's going to be a fun one. People should definitely get their tickets uh, if you want to go and see that live. Of course, yeah. we'll be casting as quickly this as we can. This will sell out. Yeah, it, it, that's yes, that's going to be awesome. This will sell out. If you're not sure, uh, you can uh, DM me on, on Twitter, X, or whatever it's called now, and I'll confirm it. I'll make sure that's the right place. But I don't think that's at the John Shill Studio. So it's not mm -hmm. where you saw the games before. They're going to be putting that on the other side of town. Those locations could, are not close to each other. Actually, didn't they call that the Coliseum the Jam, John Shill one? Wasn't that oh, called God. the Coliseum at some point? It might, it might be at the same one. There, I think they're both called coliseums. Okay, mm. just <laughs> just don't don't. It's where the gladiators buy fought. Case it's a great me. name. <laughs> but, but yeah, I know they they have several coliseums. I'm like, you guys might want to change the names on these. Yeah. Um. Anyways, you guys can message me. I'll figure it out. I'll let you know.
That's right. Message Chaseless. That's Not right. me. I don't check that stuff. My DMs are closed. That's right. No slipping into those. <laughs> uh, but, you yeah, know, nope. I'm looking forward to it, man. A nice finish. And uh, I got to tell you, it, like, the storyline of Soul Key winning two in a row is huge because it hasn't happened since Queen or since Flash. Uh, but also, Hero really is this player that we know deserves a championship. So it would be great to see him finally pick one up. That's all the time we have, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. We love you, and we will see you in the finals. Uh, have a good one. Bye-bye.